<laughs> and hello everybody and welcome to tonight's chapter of known realms to lesh we are in it's 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 crazy feral hours here um good to have you good to see you before we dive into tonight's adventure let's go ahead and uh first off david welcome back hi hey guys i'm back uh i'm david uh i play whistle the hobgoblin fighter uh you catch me here as whistle uh and maybe other things uh and then you can also catch me over at stealthy elf productions as the game master of a couple of pathfinder second edition games and uh as uh Jin, an electric cowboy in our uh in ollie's uh homebrew game teramachia teramachia Oh, David, thank amazing. you for being here. We missed you last week. I we're missed excited. You guys. We're excited to catch up with you this week, bud. Excited oh. to have you back with the the crew. Next up, Edgy. <laughs> Edgy. <laughs> they them pronouns. <laughs> I'm egg authentic on the internet. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Hi, um, I'll be playing Zia Marino, uh, he they pronouns, and uh, you can find me uh, tomorrow, Monday, over on Just a Human's channel for our One Piece Sagas game, our second episode, also for Jess's birthday, it's their birthday and we're going to be uh, kicking off uh, their uh, charity stream week um, well, for the March of Dimes, so very excited about that, 8pm uh, over, 8pm Eastern Standard Time, 5pm Pacific Standard Time on Just a Human. And then on Tuesday, uh, Embers of Rage for our uh, World with the Apocalypse uh, full Latina table werewolf bikers uh, shenanigans. I say shenanigans, it's more like a just the trauma. The trauma, <laughs> trauma, trauma. It's, it's unpacking generational trauma. <laughs> Truly. Yeah. Um, over on Bad House RPG at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, That's me. Amazing. Thank you, Angie. And to a woman who currently looks like they are being yearned over in uh, Victorian era England, Lou. Thank you. I think. Yes, I think so. Uh, yeah, you're being I, yearned over. I got like the little the diamond the past season. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you say? The diamond of the season. Yeah. I'm definitely wearing like the first season's color palette, like the main yeah. debutante. Um, hello, I'm Lou. I play with Zuli. We both use she, her pronouns, and, and uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> art socials are Luzelia underscore art. Mildly active. <laughs> Mildly active. That would and be like... a conservative or a generous. Yeah, it would be it would be a generous. Yeah, I love how you went from conservative to generous. <laughs> uh, thank I'm you. Dyslexic in anything that has an opposite, so it's like so everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lou. We're happy to have you here. And last but certainly not least, Button. Anthony Bridgerton deserved to get punched in the teeth. <laughs> My name is Button. My pronouns are they, them. So are echinaceas. I'm Blue Blue Button on social media. When I'm not in this campaign, you can find me over on Stealthy Elf Productions in the Unearthed Inheritance Pathfinder 2E campaign. And about once a month, you can find me over on Dice Cream Sandwich in the Astral Academy mini campaign. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you so much. Um, you definitely want to check out all of those things, uh, for everybody here. Hi, everybody. My name is Alec. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me all places on the internet at Tales Archived. I am the archivist here for Known Realms to Lesh, and, uh, we are working on some things that are in the works, so uh, that I am helming. So you guys can look forward, uh, to our socials for that. And, um, yeah, when I'm not here, I'm over at Stealthy Elf Productions playing Finn Reese in Heroes of Asteria Unearthed Inheritance. It, uh... It's not going well for your boy. He had a good morning, a decent morning, given what happened the day before. The afternoon really fucking sucked. <laughs> My dragon rejected you. After, like, giving the most wholesome, reassuring conversation earlier in the day. Now, Alec felt like a dog loved me in the morning and then looked at me and said, No. Uh, don't talk to me. Don't come over to my house. <laughs> it's that fucking audio from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Uh, anyway. 
Uh, thanks to our sponsor, Lupine Honey, for, uh, you know, sponsoring the channel. Uh, you can go ahead and check out Caroline's apparel at their store at the link below. And you can use code TALESARCHIVED for 10% of your purchase. That goes to any of the, uh, that, or that applies to any of their original works, any fandom merch, and any artist collaboration. Code TALESARCHIVED for 10% off. Thank you, Caroline. We appreciate you. And we have an open donation link uh, for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, obviously to get, uh, to raise any uh, funds for the people of Palestine and Gaza in this time. Um, if you are not able to provide monetary support, uplifting Palestinian voices, taking the time to learn about the situation that is currently happening, and um, uh, uplifting Palestinian voices and sharing resources like eSIMs, anything like that would be helpful. We are going to be updating this donation link with actually a few different um, charities. Uh, there's also a, a horrific event currently taking place in Sudan. Um, so we want to bring awareness to situations like that and use this platform to help people um, anywhere uh, where they need help. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I'll post when those are updated. And um, yeah, thank you guys for uh, any donation you've made. Um, thank you. Uh, is there anything else before we get started? All right. Last we left off, we had the party exiting the Saiva home catacombs. Um, we picked up with Lazuli feeling a bit of conflicted feelings in regards to dealing with Anara, the uh, Duskrin Inquisitor who was responsible for thrusting her to the material plane from the Feywild and separating her family, causing Lapis's um, uh, amnesia as well as hers. Um, after contending with feelings and understanding with some conversations from the rest of the group that no matter who it is, people are going to continue to try and stop and or corrupt Lazuli and the Faded. So Lazuli chose to give Anara an omen <laughs> and uh, use some spooky witch shit and then leave Anara bound in the catacombs. Um, we then pick up with the party moving forward. Uh, the group decided to retreat. There was a very cute call to Ishror uh, as the group decided to um, reconnect in the uh, within the Wavering Peaks, make their way up the mountains to get a high vantage point so that everybody would be able to peek down at the uh, at Saiba Home and the Catacombs and keep an eye on the situation. Um, sorry. On the way up, the party met Ari, Thanderil's bonded royal griffin companion, and it was very clear that the two of them have a very uh, maternal uh, bond. Ari is very protective of Thanderil, and uh, Zio brought the idea forward after speaking with the group to have a party to celebrate the victory, uh, 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 the victory over the Shadow Court, and uh, the fated being able to restore Shar's divinity. Um, Thanderil agreed to do tattoos. <laughs> And in exchange for every one of the faded who or anybody who gets a tattoo uh, sharing a story from their shared journey so far. Um, <laughs> we then make it up to camp. Uh, we have a few spread conversations. Um, Lazuli and Echinacea check in uh, given the circumstances and communicate about the. Um, the best option to handle Elizabeth and it the, after Fritz interjecting in the group talking, it was clear that talking to Lucian would be a good idea. Um, Echinacea spent time making restorative teas and handing them out to the party, um, having a very uh, open conversation with Kaylin about the fact that the person that they are now does indeed really love Thanderil, and it is clear that Kaylin is okay and comfortable with that. They are practicing healthy polyamory and communicating, communicating, communicating. Um, Zio found out that <laughs> Wit ate the mushroom that they had charged him to protect. Um, emotions got very high. Isandra worked hard with Zio to try and talk them down, uh, understanding their valid frustrations and hurt uh, and saying that change is an avenue that we can lead people to, but it is up to people to enact change uh, within themselves. Um, Lazuli talked to Lucian. Uh, there was a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of an air of <laughs> confusion as uh Lazuli moved forward and 
I mean, what flirtation? Did I, what did I say? Confusion. Am I silly? Maybe. <laughs> Am I silly? Uh, there was a bit. There was a bit of flirtation there, uh, but the two had a very in-depth conversation about a what Lucian saw in the catacombs, uh, Lazuli being in- incredibly comforting to Lucian and, and affirming that what he saw was not real. Um, but then Lucian shared alongside it loud enough for everybody to hear that uh, Elizabeth is a narcissist, God's favorite princess, and the most prettiest girl in the world. Um, and that that is what she truly believes. Uh, she ha- shared some stories about her uh, horrific actions, even as a child, and how Lucian, for the entirety of his life, has been dealing with the consequences of Elizabeth's actions. Um, in regards to the party, there was then a fun conversation about who would be the god of what. Um, <laughs> Thanduril and Echinacea began a conversation, but that got cut because Lou got attacked by a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally got attacked by a fucking bat. Um, but yeah, uh, quick, great, good point to mention. Zio and Ari kept initial watch on the Seven Home Catacombs and saw that uh, the cat, the keep itself is on complete high alert. The large pillars that stretch that mile worth of walk are now emitting this grim purple light and have these sphere like orbs sort of bobbing and pulsating to communicate with one another, or at least that's what it looks like. Um, the Duskrin Honor Guard, uh, they're the. Shadow Court's rotations are much more frequent. They are much more active. And um, back in the catacombs where the party had just left, there are these large, giant-like entities, uh, two of them there, patrolling the catacombs. Um, <clears throat> and spooky donuts. <laughs> um, and we did not end the night there, but we are going to pick up this night, not with the party, but an eye off the lore. What we, what you all don't see is the office of Elizabeth Whitmore as a, a feminine form is laid face down on the desk as she quickly bolts upright, <gasps> breath catching as her eyes are leaking a viscous black ichor. She wipes it, stands looks to her desk, rings a bell. The door opens in, after a few moments, um, another one of her ducal guards comes in. She does what she can to fix her appearance, wiping the black ichor from her face, fixing the hair atop her head. It's clear visibly that she is weak, shaken, But more than anything, something within Elizabeth Whitmore has snapped. And in that fracture, something new has awakened. The Ducal Guard enters very proper. There is an air of concern as the Ebonai are currently occupying the city. She moves forward, puts a a hand on his shoulder. Thank you for your service. You've done well. I release you from your service. The man looks dejected, confused, saddened. It's clear that serving A lord like the Whitmores has been a goal, a dream, an honor. My lady, if I have failed you in any way, a taloned finger purses against his lips. Oh no. You have not failed me. It is quite, quite the opposite. Her opposite hand curls to the back of his helm, pulls it down as her hand juts through his chest. She leans forward. And begins to drain the life force 
from this man. Pulling the heart from his chest, opening a compartment underneath her desk, one that has been seen in other visions, as she places it into the hag's heart in her basement. She takes a deep breath and begins to laugh. Whistle! Uh, how's it going, bud? <laughs> it's good, it's good. I don't get the joke, what she laughing at? Eh, you know, she's just kind of... It's something just silly goofy to her. Um, mm-hmm. So, you you have been around, but it... You, paint a picture for us. What? How has Whistle's day been since departing? Uh, I imagine there's a lot of rest. I imagine there's a lot of... Mm-hmm exhaustion here what has whistle Mm -hmm. been doing here uh i think between kind of leaving the catacombs and the journey up to our camp right whistle's probably been pretty vigilant uh doing a lot of scouting and you know just kind of making sure we're not being snuck up on sort of thing yeah um but once we actually hit camp uh you know and he finally feels like you know this is a safe space he just conks right out and just he fell asleep and through all the goings on of the last session whistles probably just been leaning up against a tree or uh maybe even the a nearby like stump or something and he's just been snoring away yeah yeah you you've absolutely gotten that bit of rest and you sort of you mentioned retreating into the mind palace at the mm-hmm. end of the last session you were in. Mm-hmm. What what was Whistle feeling as there was that disconnect from such a high engagement, like a high stress engagement to that very vulnerable connection with Nikolai? I think initially when, you know, he it's that whole sensation of you don't realize how tired you are until you finally like yeah. reach your, your bed kind of thing. Yep. Um, so after the visions and, and the, the battle um, where uh, he relied on Nikolai to help, you know, save his friends um, and cut down his enemies. Now Nikolai's providing sort of a different support, uh, keeping watch over him as he, as he just, you know, falls into a relaxed state. Um, but that, that, that certainly doesn't happen until, you know, they're back in camp. But when it does, it, it's pretty sudden, you know, yeah. um, from one moment to the next, uh, you know, you turn around, whistles awake, you turn back and he's, gone. he's sleeping. He's gone. Um, I think that for, I, I think Nikolai would at least understand, you know, that this is, this is a man who is tired, um, but feels safe enough now amongst his comrades uh, that he can at least rest for a moment, close his eyes kind of thing. To seize that rest, absolutely. And, and I think Whistle, and, yeah. Please. I was going to say, when Whistle wakes up, he's going to be, it, it's with a bit of a start. <laughs> yeah. And he's kind of shocked that he fell asleep. He's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> looks around everything all right you uh you see as um at this point thanderil is just walking toward echinacea lazuli and lucian are having a conversation um uh wit at this point or wit jesus zeo at this point are you on watch or have you gone to sleep you're muted babe coming down from the uh, from the rock face, um, they were having dinner. Okay. Uh, yep. On. They were by the fire. Okay, cool. So you're having a fire. Yeah, you're at the fire having dinner. You you see a very calm energy here, Whistle. Um, mm-hmm. You you do wake up, and as you kind of look next to you, you see Lermena sort of like long legs curled up, arms kind of over him. They're hunched, kind of looking at you. <sighs> Uh, excuse me. Um, I wasn't sleeping. That's a weird thing to lie about. Um, 
Did I miss anything? Um, no. Nothing. All right. Um, how are you doing? What are you looking at? <laughs> you? Oh. Sorry. They look down. <laughs> oh, don't be sorry. Um, can I help you, Lamena? Uh, I just get the vibe that I'm kind of lingering here, you know? Oh. Well, what, what was your plan? After, well, now that you're out of Cyber Home, what's next for you? Out of where? The catacombs that we found you in. That's what it was called. Ah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not a planning kind of fella, you know? Uh, things just kind of happen. And I respond in kind. But I think I need to figure out how to get home. Well, and where's home for you? A Feywild. Oh, you might be in luck. A few of us here are familiar. Oh, so you're saying I can stick around? I'm not sure that decision. I'm not sure I have the power to decide that for you. Hmm. But, uh, you were helpful. You did your part. I can't imagine that you're unwelcome. That's good to know. Very good to know. Insight check. <laughs> Give me an insight check. Hold on. What's this weird little fella's deal, dude? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, not for there's an insight. Can I, instead of insight, actually, I don't think Whistle is actually going to, Whistle's always been a good judge of character necessarily, but can I look him over with like an investigation and just see? See what you can glean off of them? Yeah. Any, yeah, any sort of, you know, symbols or. Yeah, give me, yeah, give me an investigation check. Oh, that's uh, a natural yeah. one. It's a natural one for 12. <laughs> I'm still pretty sleepy. Yeah, you're kind of wiping the sleep from your eyes. And oh. You hear Nikolai come through. Don't push yourself. You've done a lot, and you're, you don't always have to be hypervigilant. We're safe right now, and we're all together. I think Whistle kind of grabs the... Uh, I think he still has uh, the halberd. Yeah. You know, as he's kind of been sleeping, it's just kind of like propped up against him. Um, and he's just going to kind of just kind of stroke his thumb yeah. along the, the shaft. Um <laughs> yeah you do okay um, no absolutely and it almost feels for a moment like there's a hand above yours and just sort of like reciprocating the touch um, yeah. <laughs> stroking the shaft left. yeah <laughs> incredible um, but yes uh, you, you feel and Nikolai is just like you can rest Yes. Um, Though they are fucking weird. <laughs> the, I've not met their kind before, have you? Oh, this is a... They look like they're... Not from around here, that is for sure. I imagine that... What, they said Wildren? Yes. I've, I've never heard of the Wildren before, so I, I imagine they are... They are... A native to the Feywild. <sighs> but I'm, I am not versed in the Feywild. Or their peoples, their heritages, ancestries. Nothing like that. <sighs> that is out of my realm of expertise. I know, um... <clears throat> my kind hobgoblins, we've... able to dab touch the magic once in a while. But, uh... I've never had a strong connection myself. <clears throat> well, maybe they're looking for a kindred spirit. Something, someone that looks familiar to home. I imagine uh, you and Lazuli fit that bill. Uh, Won't be a 
a rush to leave something familiar in a scary and different place. Mm. I like to think that while Nikolai and Whistle are having this exchange, Lermena like, and Whistle, Lermen and Whistle are staring at each other. <laughs> Lermena straight up just. Uh, hey, does, sorry. does he always do that? I'm, I'm fine. Do you smell something? Someone, someone made food, right? Uh, Zio made dinner, and there's uh, Echinacea made tea. I think it was. Mm. Um... Lapis and... Oh, yes. Lapis, Ishra, and, and Aura and Ishra made dinner. And Aura made dinner. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, breakfast or dinner? Yeah, yeah that's right. It was breakfast or dinner. Uh, let's, uh... Why don't we move closer to the fire? Ooh, I'll Let's take see. I'll take some grub. You see their legs shift into rabbit legs as they hop forward and start jumping toward the dinner. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> that's quite a... That's quite a... Something... Oh, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Would you like to show us something? Nope. What else? Uh, that's fair. <laughs> um, whistle. For the first time in a long time, you're surrounded by people with a shared goal. But this goal is so diametrically opposed to the one that you had in the Iron Legionnaires. What is Whistle's feeling as he looks upon these people that he finds himself ingratiated with? Where does... Yeah, what what is he feeling right now as he looks at the group? I think as Whistle looks at the group, you know, Lermena kind of scurrying over with their odd rabbit feet, uh, Echinacea uh, and Thanderil, you know, reconnecting by the fire. Zio, I think Zio was with Asandro eating dinner. Right. And then, you know, just kind of the the air of ease in the camp at the moment. Uh, I think Whistle feels a sense of peace, you know, that he's never really felt. He's always been so ready for the next fight or everything has just been, you know, mission to mission. Um, and this kind of this kind of downtime. You know, this kind of basking in a victory well earned and feeling, you know, that you can relax thereafter is it's new to him. I think the I think he smiles as he thinks to himself that this difference that you know he's he's been in a lot of post combats, you know, he's been in a lot of fights and he's been in the aftermath of a lot of fights, but this one is so different. I think it's another eye-opening moment for him where he feels like this is the difference between hunting down and eliminating a target versus you know uh preserving something you believe in so i think that's i think that's the big difference for him yeah the feeling that something was protected rather than taken away. You sit there looking forward toward the group, this sense of relief, right? Sort of washing over in this newfound comfort and something within you begins to... pulse. There's this this thrum that emanates from your chest... Nothing mechanically changes. Mm -hmm. There are no additions here, but you just... You hear in your mind... (laughs) Excuse me. A motorcycle, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Do I get a motorcycle? Whistle got a motorcycle. No. Um, But you just hear this... For a second, it sounds like a language you are unaware of. Mm. It doesn't make sense to you. But then you hear more of that mechanical whirring, gear shifting. Sorry, wrong music. (laughs) (laughs) That's calm. I know know that struggle. (laughs) Nikolai, did you feel that? Yes. 
Yes, I, I did. The, you feel the halberd begin to shake just a bit as you hear even blades deserve rest. We saw then, kind of, yeah. No, please go ahead. Thank you. I think he he just like lets out a big sigh, and similar to when Echinacea had removed the tattoo on his back, um, he feels he feels a uh, a more sense of of a door opening for him. Once more, sorry, yeah. yeah, something shifts. Mm -hmm. Once more, you feel that. But it is, and it's akin to the sheathing you heard in Saiba mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it is so comforting. He's going to look over to Lazuli. Does Lazuli react at all? You don't hear the... The sound or anything, right? Nobody else hears it. Nobody else hears it. Okay. I have like an ethereal sense, right? Or is that you do, you but it's not. It's not. It's not hitting that. Yeah. But you do see Lazuli and Lucian. I, Lucian, I think, steps up at this point. So, mm -hmm. if there is a will to approach, you absolutely can. Yeah. Um, I, I if, if it looks like they're you know having a moment and stuff, he'll he'll wait. Um, but probably once Lazuli's alone, he he'll, he'll approach. Yeah, like I said, Lucian gets up yeah. and begins to like walk the perimeter. Um, but yeah, okay, you begin to approach Lazuli. We'll pause there. Um, <clears throat> Echinacea, Thanderil sort of settles into you. Good evening. Good evening, Than. I cannot express how good it is to hear that. <laughs> it's like I've been asleep. But you're waking up. I'm feeling quite awake indeed. They offer him some tea. He'll take it eagerly and sip. Just, hmm. It's delicious. It's restorative, though I don't... You don't look harmed at all. He sort of takes their hand and puts it to his heart. Oh, but it's helping right here. <laughs> Deeper wounds than flesh can show. Deeper wounds? What have you been doing the past half a century? <laughs> the first decade was a lot of mourning. I lost the two people I love most in this world in a day. You, Lorian, I... I spent... A lot of time making sure that the things you built up were protected. I, anonymous, I anonymously donated a lot of my estate to Egret. <clears throat> I checked on our home, though I could not dare enter it. It was my fault. I was... I am guilty. I made sure Dolan was safe and taken care of when times were hard. <clears throat> Thank you. He is my family as well. Beyond that, I spent most of my years, most of that 56, most of those 56 dreadful years working for Kevaith. 
I explored ruins, mostly. Used my tactical mind, things we used to do together often. What <clears throat> end? To look for objects of power. Things that could embolden Kerve's goals, which I understand I was not privy to the whole truth. And what did you find and return to him? There were a few vestiges that were created by him. No. What do you mean? He lied. Um, God, her name changed. Remind uh, it's me. A, it's Arashni. Arashni. They were created by his sister, Arashni. He poisoned her mind as Arashni. he did mine. And he took credit for her creations. God. <clears throat> History does not repeat itself, but it does indeed rhyme. Rhyme. He thinks of the sword. Mm hmm. He does believe himself funny. To answer your question, a blade known as Star Razor, crafted by Kevaith? No. I say so sarcastically. I, just expressing what I was told. <clears throat> a hammer made in the likeness of Landeth, the Pyre Mall. A, an armor, a protective armor from the Lord of Storms. He had me search them out and return them to him. They were, the champions who wielded them in the past were confirmed dead and gone. Some defeated in battle, some gave up their power. Did they really? Now I am not so sure. <clears throat> and I... You asked me a question. In the catacombs, why continue working for him? You see as there are tears that begin to well. I can think of no conceivable reason. The only thing that leads me to that conclusion is what you said. And I've been ensorcelled. Used. And much like a dog of war, <laughs> meant to follow my orders unyieldingly, unquestioning. Tis yet another thing that I must apologize for. You would apologize for being a victim. I would apologize for causing you so much pain. He clasps your hands in his and just sort of... I wish to know everything that happened. And Echinacea tells him <clears throat> everything from the beginning. They tell him how they were frozen in the Feywild in a block of amber for 56 years, how they escaped with Igni as she was dying, how due to Igni's weakened state, um, they were grabbed by Koliata out of the sky. Um, and with the new context of a life domain cleric. Yep. They tell him about the memory that was implanted into their mind, the memory of ripping 
Valor's heart out of his chest and the weight of having believed for so long that they were a murderer settles over their face. And I think that they, what they don't realize is the rhyme here, because we did not see Elizabeth pull the heart out of a man's chest. Echinacea does not realize that perhaps Coliata was warning them of things to come. Inspiration point. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um. But they, she implanted that memory in in my mind, and the Mages Harkonnen were waiting for me in Kalekirk. The husband of the man who I believed to have murdered apprehended me. Justifiable rage. I was kept in solitary confinement for the first month in an anti-magic room, and Reed could not reach me. No one could. The place was hallowed, and no god could enter. And when Casimir invaded my mind and realized that I had not killed his husband, he took me captive and locked me in his tower, where I remained until... Until the ghost... Do you... Until the ghost of Sir Declan came to me. Sir Declan. Did you... I know. They knew each other, right? Above the table. Declan Alcott. Yes, they, they, sir, the date, the memory that we played out in the gala, right? Where mm -hmm. Lorian engaged with Declan and Reeves and Echinacea was there. It's coming into frame now. You were unable to recognize Sandral at that point. He was leaving the tent that Lorian walked in. Mm hmm. He was there. I, I know. Yes. Declan Alcott. What I said to you in the catacombs was true. He <clears throat> is the fate touched of Vamir. But he did not know it, and he he came and removed me. Where has he gone? I must thank him. You can it's clear to see that there is so much grief for Echinacea on Thanderil's face. There is the responsibility laid bare in this man's stark expression. He looks down, still holding their hands. The gentleness on his hands does not reach his face. There is anger directed at the people responsible. There is anger inward at his culpability. There is deep sadness and regret but in that, you see a spark of something. He looks between the two of your hands intertwined. And you see for a moment, hope. An opportunity. I am... And these, you see as he traces your neck and your cheek and your ear, these are new. We have many enemies. And Echinacea laughs. <laughs> to, to be very clear, like Echinacea does not have disassociate identity disorder mm -hmm. this is like a magically induced splitting and those pieces have been stitched back together so like it, the stitches will heal and like everything will like be made whole and like intertwine it's just that it's new and yeah. it isn't fully happening yet so in this moment the older echinacea the echinacea who's had 50 years of experience under their belt realizes that it's only been a week since they died yeah. and they're here um, a week in this game of course which is 10 days right 
Um, well, I was killed, but Lizzie brought me back right away, and Whistle. Whistle saw to the man who did it. I know that is not the outcome you'd wish for, but I am glad that you had people here to fight for your life. I know that guilt must weigh on you, and I'm sorry. You, hands sort of reach to the face, seeing the emotion kind of take over Echinacea. Life is the most important thing to you. I know this, and I'm sorry that life was taken, and I'm sorry that everything I did was wrong and led to this. I don't pretend to know the nature of this enchantment on you, but I will break it. I believe I'm not you. angry with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. My love, you have nothing to apologize for. This was done to us. We are not responsible for the suffering that has been foisted at our feet. And I meant what I said. If I can remain close to him, I can point out his weaknesses and we will stop him together. I am at your side. We will make sure that life is protected. Yes. He sort of leans forward kisses them on the cheek I will I'm glad we have a party coming up <laughs> as am I I've always wanted something like your celestial veil tattoo Looks like I'll be busy tomorrow night. Very busy. He sort of um, places the hands again uh, on theirs and just says, I can detail the runes that I dealt for him and the people I fought. It was, mo it was mostly agents of the Webbed Weaver. Of Arashni? Yes. He... I was only recently involved in meetings with Koliada. That was a I understand. A new development, but as I said, you have my aid when you want it. And she deserves to be healed. And maybe in the best way she could, she was trying to warn you. For all the things that she is right now, she is smart. We will discuss this with the entire group. Yes, I think that is wise. They hold his face, their hand still in his. In the past three months, Echinacea, I become close with Kaylin. I understand. You 
You two look to have a very good bond. And he reminds me of Lorian. He does. He seems like a very good man. You two have a lot in common. And I think everything in Echinacea wants to tell Thanderil that Lorian is alive, but with the knowledge that... He's unsourceled. Yeah, there's this... <clears throat> there's this fear mm -hmm. that the same thing that Aedwulf was meant to do whenever they learned of Valerithian will happen with Thanderil. Mm -hmm. You see... So... Yeah. They don't tell him. We'll have to talk, but he just kind of very similar to the conversation you had with Kaylin, he's Are you happy? Does he make you happy? He does, and I in here with you now, I don't know if <laughs> it's been so long since I've been this happy. You deserve it. And Andrew, it's... can I kiss you? Yes. And they do. All right. And we will fade to black here. Perfect. All right. Um, uh, nicely done. The rest of the party. So, Zio, you are eating dinner. Lazuli, your conversation with... Um, Lucian has ended at this time. Anything particular that you guys are getting up to before the night reaches its end? Before we go ahead and take a long rest? I was planning on, uh, in between talking to, uh, Whistle, maybe pop speaking with, uh, my family who's cooking, but I can also do it in the morning. Yeah, yeah, they're still whipping up dinner, and that's all good. So, uh, yeah, you see that um, uh, Lapis, Aura, and, and Ishror, um, Zio, Isandro, you're being handed more and more plates. <laughs> Do you like the eggs or the muffins better? Aura sort of like leaning forward, like, which one is it? Both. Both! Just like, keeps eating. You're my kind of boy. He slams, like, <laughs> all the food on the plate, puts it up to you. And, and Zeo for you... keeps eating. Yeah. For you, this is very reminiscent of home, right? Like, breakfast yeah. is this very, like, ritualistic, uh, you know, thing with your family. And it's so loud and so interconnected mm -hmm. and so woven. Uh, or, like, slams food on the plate, hands it over, kisses you on the forehead. Sorry, is that okay? Yes. Okay. Why she does it again? <laughs> 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 Zia just laughs. Yeah. Just keeps eating. Uh, Sandro's like, just one more muffin for me. I couldn't bear muster another. And his hand is kind of lingering on your thigh, uh, Zio. And <laughs> um and Aura is just like, you'll take two. Hands him another two more muffins, puts it in. He's like <laughs> Z Zio grabs the second one and just eats it. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Yep. So you two kind of eat dinner and uh, it is, yeah, very wholesome. Um, Aura walks up to you, Lazuli. <sighs> you made it. You're okay. Um, do you want to talk to your dads? I need to talk to all of you. Oh. Oh. Seems serious. It is. It can, it can probably wait if you'd like. Now that I know about it, I kind of like need to know the details or else I'm going to be an anxious wreck and no one here is going to like me when I'm an anxious wreck. Did you see what I just did with Zio's plate? It's that times a hundred and I can't stop talking, which is already very hard for me. Okay. <laughs> so tonight is probably best. Um, I would like to put words on it, so... Um, boys, we're talking to the girl. <laughs> Lapis is like, all right. Ishra's like, what? Oh, hello, sweet girl. <laughs> um, yeah, so you two are kind of like around the breakfast spot when th where things are being cooked and uh, temperatures are dropped down and everything is sort of uh, set to a pause. Um, but yeah, sort of. Lapis leans forward. Is everything all right? So 
kind of starts out just like picking at the food. Do we have dinner tomorrow morning? Ah, an <laughs> inspiration point. That's incredibly funny. I like that a lot. <laughs> Lapis goes, this doesn't make sense to me. So of course we can do dinner in the morning. Okay. Um, I found out who caused our separation. Aura kind of perks up. And did you... I couldn't. I wanted to. But with my pact, taking a life em emboldens the people that I don't want to get stronger. And her name is Inara. And Lizzie will convey, just like, make sure to catch all the details that Inara, you know, gave. Because I'm not sure I can, like, perfectly recall. Yeah, no, no, no. You're all good. You're all good. You, yeah, uh, so everything that you've learned about Inara is, is detailed to... Absolutely. Oh. Aura is a bit crestfallen. I, I don't want to say disappointed. But there is a bit of anxiety present. <clears throat> And Ishror just sort of... Do you feel as if you did the right thing? The right thing for you. Very simple terms. I wish... I wish I were powerful enough... to make sure that whatever she is, it's... that I could end it. Because I know as soon as you squash someone like Inara, another one will come. She has plans with me. It sounded like she had plans for me, and she was just a harbinger of something larger. It wasn't her plan. She was just meant to act on it. <clears throat> like Elizabeth. They come after me because I am a wellspring, baby. I'm a child of the wellspring. There's power in that. But why can't I use it? Why does it have to be via someone... Why does that have to be the strongest form through something that's powerful in a negative? <clears throat> Ishor just sort of puts a hand on your shoulder. Your power can and should be whatever you want it to be. I wanted to snuff out that type of magic. People who hunger for that corruption. <clears throat> I want to heal it for the Ebonite to be able to to die if they wish, I suppose, or people to fall into their natural rhythms of life and death. It just seems corrupt. I don't know what to do about it, though. I think I'm on the right path, <clears throat> and she's kind of stroking Fritz looking <sighs> down. Like <laughs> Fritz is kind of like... Yeah, settling comfort. in and just kind of like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've I've been in emotional support familiar more than once in my very long years of being a witch's companion <laughs> this is not new to me <laughs> bitch my chin <laughs> um Lapis sort of pipes in and just if you think you're on the right path and follow the one you're on we have no right to judge you for the choices you've made. None. Because it is not the responsibility of the child to perfect their parents' life. You did what you thought was right. At that moment, but I, I did what I did because I only knew so little and I just couldn't process it. But I don't know if that's what I want to do this time. Because there will be a next time. And I want to talk to you about it and feel more confident. 
That's the I don't th- know. <clears throat> Go ahead. She's just stammering. Yeah. That's the thing. It's not my belief that we should tell you how you should deal with this. Or as like, well, I'll tell you how I deal with it. I would fucking end her. She took you both away from me. She took my baby. And the man that I've loved. How many families has she destroyed? I don't care to find out. It was enough when it was mine. But your dad is right. Our choices don't have to be yours. I'm just telling you what I do. Lapis. I truly do not know what I do. Ishroar. Imprisonment is only temporary. You could try to convince her that her path is the wrong one, but I don't know how. I don't know how that would be. How that would go. So I am inclined to agree with your mother. If she is a threat that will rear her head, treat her as a weed. Pluck her from a world she wishes to make sick. Why is everybody nodding? Lizzie's getting an idea. (laughs) Okay. Looking at Fritz, is there a way for me to take a life, justly? How does one decide? I don't know if there is, but I I work on setting my own. Taking life in a just cause is a construct of humanity. Taking life is taking be it at the decree of manufactured law or preordained destiny, it is still theft. You could... You could have her be judged by a room of your peers, but... Death... Go Go ahead. No, you... I don't puzzle just on Inara's fate. It is, it is merely an example that that now is a crossroads for every other decision I make beyond this point. There will be many of her, and I want to know where my values stand. It's not just her life, but how do I wield my power? How do I grow it? What are my values? And I... Can I make an oath? Or is it an oath or is it a pact? Can I make something a pact with myself? Fritz just says, you cannot, but you can make a promise. And promises are far more forgiving than pacts are. Lazuli looks down at her gloves. I took some of the lives of the monsters in that cave, but I think Inara was different. I don't She was a monster. I must think on it more. Thank well, you for your counsel. She says to her parents. They all Aura just sort of come here. Hugs you and and Lapis and Ishwar wrap around too, uh, mm-hmm. and you're getting a you're getting a, a, a thruple parent hug. Uh-huh. Um, 
but um, Lapis sort of leans back, gives you a kiss on the forehead, and just... It's all right. Take the time you need to think. And we are all always going to be here to give you that counsel. We love you, Lazuli. I love you all, too. She gets some rest. Right. All right. Um, and with that, what we can probably touch on Whistle and Lazuli in the morning. Feels like a good point to hit long rest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Actually, can I just add something to... David, your to... mic got really loud. Oh, sorry. Let me see if I can turn that down. It didn't for me. Hello, testing. Perfect. Is that better? Okay. Um, uh, only thing I kind of want to add. Yeah, please. To, to think just now. I think Whistle was kind of like awkwardly approaching Lazuli uh, as she went around to go talk to Aura and them. Can Whistle have been like around the corner just listening? Oh, God. Yeah. Give me a stealth check. Okay. <laughs> Can I make a perception check for yes. the Book of Many Eyes? Inspiration. Yep. <laughs> I was gonna say, Zio, make me an make me a perception check too. <laughs> Cause you and Asanja are sitting there eating dinner. Twenty-one for stealth. Twenty-one for stealth? It's very good. Lazuli. Twenty-nine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> catch a whistle just kind of like around the corner i think you know just kind of listening and then kind of walks away after a little bit take note of it so if you okay. bring it up later she'll she'll get you perfect she's a fellow eavesdropper so you know. I, am, I am a i'm a fellow pot stirrer i would like to listen game and see what game. <laughs> all right um <laughs> If that is it for everybody, then I think we'll go ahead and take everybody can take a long rest and we'll take our break here. Sound good, everybody? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, we will see you guys shortly. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.
welcome back. Um, the party has taken a long rest, and we will... Yes! <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a few sessions since we had one of those. Can I do something really quick that would have happened in the night? It yep. truly won't take more than a couple seconds. Um, Echinacea would individually message each party member, like really just each person in the group, uh, asking them not to mention that Lorian is... Uh, please don't mention that Lorian is alive until we know how to break the enchantment on Thanderu. Is that okay? Does that make Zeal sense? Zeal salutes and then remembers <laughs> that they can't say <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. <laughs> Does everybody agree to that? Understood. Thank you, Whistle. All right. The the morning is upon you. Um, as per requested, there is a steak and potatoes dinner being made for breakfast. Bless you. Um, so, you guys, tell me what you're up to this morning. Whistle's gonna find Zio. Okay. Zio, where are you at this morning? Paint us a picture. Yo, um, uh, being swayed by the smell of steak and potatoes, even though they ate their fill in breakfast food last night. Uh, they're uh, coming out of uh, wherever it is that... Sorry, I had to burp. Oh man, that was a follow-up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all those muffins. Um, uh, breakfast food wherever... didn't do that. Oh my god, it's really... Co Give me a second. <laughs> Wherever it was that um, Isandra and Zio decided to sleep that night. Um, so they're like, kind of like, like, you know, cartoons where they're like floating and like being led by like a little. <laughs> the, scent of, the scent of breakfast. You're like. Yeah. But not so cartoony. He's just kind yeah, of like bleary eyed. Yeah. They're sleepy and making their way toward where food is being prepared. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Whistle, you're able to see Zio kind of shaking off the sleep and making mm -hmm. their way toward toward mm -hmm. breakfast. Uh, good morning, Isandro. Zio. Good uh, morning. Good morning. I think they'll be done soon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Zio, can I talk to you for a moment? Sandra's yeah. like, I was heading to my watch anyway, so I will get out of your hair. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, see you. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we kind of move away from the camp a little bit, um, walk along, you know, like the tree line or something. And uh, Whistle's going to say, Do you remember the promise we made back in Ellen Bell? Well, I think I've, I've got a few things that I need to be held accountable for. Things I haven't told the rest of the group yet. Ian, what haven't you told us? <laughs> I've, been in con I've been in contact with Isradon. The captain of the Alaric, of the, Iron of the Iron Legionnaires. My captain. The Iron... The Iron Legionnaires need a place to call home. Specifically, Isradon's crew. And... They're hoping Cyberholm will be that home. Oh. Okay, um... So, I mean, Saiva Home is... It's, uh, impenetrable right now. Yes. So we... Are you going to warn her or like what, what? I honestly don't know.
Here's the thing. This is also the Iron Legionnaires. The people who not just only killed your Nikolai, but also killed Echinacea. And is after this book that we still have and have made it pretty clear that are not on friendly terms with our party. If they go to Cyberhome and they show up, Cyberhome is on as high alert as it is. She's going to think that you tricked her. Yes, that would seem the obvious conclusion, if I were. So then, what, what was part of the deal then? What would she give you if you gave her? If I gave us a home, she would leave us alone. And... She would help restore Nikolai. Okay, well, one, I don't think we need her help with restoring Nikolai, because I think there's plenty of capable people here that could potentially find an answer for that. Um, so, check. Uh, two, We're shit out of luck. Whistle. I know. There's a moment where like Zeo looks at Whistle and just thinks about what Iola's warned Zeo about with Whistle. Um, and just there is a there for the first time, Whistle and I would say this very very obvious like Zio is someone who wears their emotions on their sleeve um you can see a hesitation around you um i say be honest with her you don't have to tell her why it didn't get done but the thing is that now we have to be prepared for them to come back for us, I'm assuming. Yes. I know what the Iron Legionnaires are like. I grew up with that. They're relentless. Yes. The next time, she won't send someone like Lord Tavish. You shouldn't have made that deal. I believe that we will find a way. We, this group, will find a way to restore Nikolai. I made the deal because I know the next time she's not going to send someone like Lord Tavish. She's killed one of us already. Two. The other option. We can let her fight the Shadow God. And then we strike when they're weak. That's a really wicked gambit. And not... Stakes are low. She is as powerful and as capable as you say that she is. She's only going to come back harder still. But you're not wrong. 
I will be honest with you, Zio. Before yesterday, I was worried about what she could do. Isradan held a power over me, and that power was fear. But yesterday, I saw us return divinity to a god. We beat the darkest parts of ourselves, and we came out stronger. I bet on us. I do too. Just... We'll add it to the roster. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, we have gods, what's of... Leader of the Iron Legionnaires. Two gods. Jesus. Oh, we could run. Whoever he, whoever he is. <laughs> Who's Jesus? I'm I'm not opposed to running. If that is what the group feels is best. But I do think that this is a potential opportunity. I'm not opposed to running either. You saw that clearly. Yeah. Well, no, you weren't there. I didn't yeah. Sorry. When we were in the catacomb. When we were in the, catacomb the catacombs and Alma was there, it was... Lazuli almost went down. And I know that myself and Cassandra, we wouldn't have been able to protect us. We had to run. Running is not... Not a bad idea. Tactical retreat. There you go. Well, I'm really hungry and I smell steak and potatoes, so. <laughs> but you have to be honest about this with everyone, not just me. I will. I just, I owed it to you to tell you first. Mm -hmm. And also, I, uh, I overheard Lasuli talking to a family last night. It sounds like she may need to uh, one day take a life. And I just wanted to know how you would feel if I extended her the same offer that I gave to you. A decision to choose. We're holding each other accountable, but that is a pact between you and me. I understand. You'll have to talk to Lazuli about that. Fair enough. I've kept you from your breakfast. One last thing. Don't keep things like that from us. Just allow us the chance to find a different way. I've been told repeatedly there's so many different ways to do things that I don't have to do it by myself. You don't have to do this by yourself either. I'm Zia's sorry. gonna Zia's going to slap uh a whistle with their tail before walking off. <clears throat> Alright. Aura kind of looks at you as you approach and says, Oh, you look like you love potatoes. <laughs> <Hands out. laughs> 
<laughs> stacking a plate for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Zio, you settle in to eat breakfast. Um, the folks on watch this morning are Lucian and Asandro. Uh, they're both sort of uh, watching the ridge line and maintaining a visual. Um, so, yeah. All right. Uh, wonderful conversation. Lazuli Echinacea. You guys are up in the morning. A complete tonal shift, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, Echinacea's gathered up whoever has been waiting on breakfast to um, make snowmen. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Because they, they told Wit they would give him something to hit, and they are unaware of the impending dragon. Yeah. So yeah. Be, 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 be. <laughs> They're uh, like along the watch line, making snowmen for uh, Sandro and Lucian to like yeah. hide behind. Incredible. <laughs> With whoever else wants to, if Lazuli wants to be there as well. Uh, I, they definitely dragged Kaylin out there as well. Kaylin, I, I was going to say, Kaylin is um, absolutely. Hello, Tavern of Worlds. Welcome in. Thank you for the raid. Um, you, you absolutely see Kaylin like hard at work. His hair is completely up. He's like, snowman, snowman. <laughs> snowman like <laughs> making like the most perfect spherical snowman um uh <laughs> thanderil is casting a minor illusion and is testing no please help me okay if that one works uh, <laughs> he goes to the other one ah please mercy mercy all right that one works uh and then he, he, you see as he creates like they look like inflatable arm flailing tube men <laughs> like as they just kind of like oh no please don't please help me um, but you see that like Kaylin and Thander are all kind of working together on this and you see as Lermena is like kicking up snow as well it's like no they don't look weak enough <laughs> so it's like shaving off some of the snow no 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 Lermena the bigger they are the harder they fall oh, and um, shit. Acacia is using prestidigitation to like um <laughs> like scoop up and like make colder and hardier because you can make things colder yeah. they're essentially turning them into like ice men so that they'll give them a nice shattering sound when absolutely it, uh, hits it with his hammer you do see ishror up they wouldn't if they're tactical targets they wouldn't be standing that close to each other so you might want to create three more in the back they're a little bit more widespread something oh, if this is very much. if this is an enrichment activity for the child wit um <laughs> we should be able to <laughs> we should give him the enrichment he needs <laughs> and wit's like what <gasps> i need everybody have to adam <laughs> everybody see very zuko coded like <laughs> zio you immediately hear the same flames that you've heard a few times mm -hmm. but there is this crunch exactly as you like set it up to be as this fireball bursts through the first row of like two or three he says aha and then you hear the recorded voice of thanderil oh no please stop mercy i beg please and then the <laughs> arms go crazy even <laughs> after the snowmen have been shattered you see his like little illusions of thanderil are going like this <laughs> he's like you see he's snaps and they disappear as each target is taken out uh, but you see um as he just sort of like takes the hammer out sort of like launches it and just starts running and like truly truly like a kid on a snow day like it's there's that tinge of violence right a big tinge of violence but dude is just getting it out um and he's just yeah he's just kind of weaving through and like this is the first time any of you have heard Wit laugh in earnest. Like, there's not a <laughs> edge to it, right? It's just a ho oh, ho ho as he's like tearing through the snowmen. Um, he's having a he's having a great time, and you see as he leans back. All right, we're gonna need to build more, and then we're gonna have a formation here. We're gonna do four teams, and then everybody's gonna dive in. Understood? Like it, it, it's a bit of a tactical mind, but he's also like, I, "This cannot stop now." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, get ready to have fun, and then they start building more snowmen. You see, as Aura goes, <laughs> start shooting the snowman. I'm a healer, but <laughs> I'm a healer, but <laughs> does everybody engage with destroying the snowman? Um, I don't think Zio would, Understood. Um, but Zio is just watching um, and waiting for the for the fun to end um, because they'll have a um, they'll have a plate of food. Okay. To share. 
Perfect. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if whoever engages in it, like if you want to kind of flavor how you're destroying snowmen, please do. Um, whistle, um, Lazuli Echinacea. Whistle's going to hang back. Okay. Lazuli's hanging back. All right. Um, um, Echinacea's not. Um, and they're actually making this a competition with wit who they want to start using more of the primordial current yeah. magic that he has inside of him stored up mm -hmm. and like just trying to relieve some of it. And they are an elemental adept of fire. So they are fire bolting, like yeah. aiming at the heads of these. And they're like, I'm doing better than you. The fuck? You see as he claps his hands together, wall of fire through like six of them. He's like, no, shut up. Shut up. You see Thanderil, like he's engaging as well. He's spinning Karim Shawl very quickly and just kind of weaving through, like effortlessly cutting down these targets. Um, but all of you are able to see this sort of like really jaunty, like morning play weaving through the snowmen. Um, yeah. Uh, what a phenomenal idea. I can, uh, button inspiration point. I really love that. Um, but yeah, that that activity goes on. I'd say that probably goes on for the better part of like an hour or two. Like in the morning, folks are just kind of playing with the snowmen and just weaving through them. Um, there is not, Wit is not a person who knows thank you yet. He's just, you see, is he just kind of fun? Very good, very good. <laughs> and, he, good. and he just sort of sits down. Zio, you said you had a plate? Yeah. Um, it seems like he's finally let out. Yeah. The steam. Um, All of you are able to see that that crater in his chest is dimmer. Mm -hmm. um, Zio will approach and will uh, just silently hand him a plate of food. Sort of takes the tail, grabs it. Did you poison it? I'm kidding. Why that's would not, I? That's your. It's not your style. No. It looks good. But you can thank Aura for that. Thanks. He shoves a whole potato in his mouth. <laughs> you see as he just crunches, there's this bit of steam as like the potatoes become really crisp. As he just chomps, mm -hmm. he's like, oh. Well, that's good. Did you have fun? There's a realization as that's what that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, you can thank Ikanisha later also. Thank you, doctor. Look at you already making Making waves. Right. I said later, and you. I said later. You did it right now. Good for you. Thanks for the food. You're welcome. Are there any ones I shouldn't eat? You can tell that's asked in earnest, not in a way to prod. Fucked. You can eat. Continues to very similar to you shoving potatoes <laughs> in the face, like just <laughs> red light, like oh. <laughs> I've heard whispers that we're having a party. Is that accurate? I told you we were having a party. I know. I'm just making sure that's still the case. That is still the case. I think we're gonna discuss it later. We might be moving a little bit more, so. That we're farther away. Yeah, get me the fuck that away was... from that place. Yeah, good idea. I know you were very blasé about it yesterday. <clears throat> but Alma following you, that is still concerning. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not. But this is very typically her. I... So, so the two of you are a party, a team, a couple? 
We have fucked around. We are not a couple. No, I, 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 uh, we serve the same goal. I think that's about it. She's made it clear she doesn't like me all that much. Yeah. Yeah, she's good at that, which I know you know. <clears throat> He's scary. You're scary too. And I'm not going to underestimate that, which is why I ran. That's probably smart. She no won't. longer chase. Go ahead. No, you first. I was going to say, it's like I told you, I'm no longer chasing after the orbs. Which means that however many more you get, you'll be at a advantage. Even though I would ask you to reconsider, but I know I cannot force you to. There's something that you said yesterday that didn't sit well with me. Because it is in direct opposition to something you told me the first night we met. What was that? Do you remember that night? Yeah. You said that you would find the orbs and then that you would die. So what is survival to a man who is on a path that ends in their death? <laughs> Think on that. And then Zio's going to get up and walk away. Okay. You see, yeah, you see as you depart, Wit just kind of sits and eats his food. It's clear that there is a, a bit of steam coming from the nose, though his abilities have been expended for the day. Okay. It's a great question to ask. Right. Uh, Lazuli, Echinacea, anybody, anything to do to bring up before? Because I imagine there's going to be some instruction to move the group forward. Um, there's been talk of a party, right? Like that's a like been spread around, right? Um, but I just wanted to make sure that Lazuli would know. I think so. Um, yep. believe that. Uh, Lazuli is very excited and uh i know like at the start of the day you we like personally prepare our spell slots but like canonically you're in under the tape i don't know on the table what whatever above um, table or no not above table but like in in game oh yeah thank like, you flavoring that <laughs> yeah um like she's really excited about like how am i gonna prepare for this party mm. um spells that she's gonna use like how is she gonna contribute to like a really raucous like throwdown 
So I'd say hoedown and sure. Uh, <laughs> but um, well, I guess anyway, that is the thing. Um, We're gonna play Beyonce. <laughs> Oh, uh, exactly. Hey, Texas. <laughs> she also desperately and deeply misses Pepper, so she's gonna go find Durwood so she can get some Pepper time uh, <laughs> while she, uh, like, pours over her book and just, like, talks about party plans with Pepper. Yeah, and, Pep like, um, Durwood and Deirdre are sparring right now, and Pepper is, uh, unlike Wit, she does not have her enrichment time set for the day, and she just sort of... <laughs> Plop, plops like a fucking uh, like bulldog or pug over to you, and it's just like, "Good morning." I'm bored. Oh my gosh, like Pepper, I just see as like a living squishmallow. Um, yeah, pretty much. And and Lazuli needs her squishmallow <clears throat> time where she's just like, Pepper. She she literally does the <laughs> uppies, please. Yeah. So like Pepper is just <clears throat> like sitting in Lazuli's lap. Which I think is a really cute contrast because Lazuli is so blue and ice coated, and then there's this little fire dragon, like puppy kind of vibe, and uh, they're just hanging out. And that's important also because she wants to kind of get close to Pepper and maybe talk about fire. Because Pe can Pepper like burp fire? Oh yeah, or... she 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 has a little fire. Poof, poof, poof. Yeah, great. Because the, uh, the things that she's wanting to do for the party are firework related. Um, and so uh, she kind of goes pepper about various things pyrotechnics indeed i require your expertise pepper well derwood has flares oh well i have the spell pyrotechnics <gasps> i do i can accompany you and just you see she just looks at the ground Poof! like a fireball just comes out of her mouth and hits the snow a little bit of steam just <laughs> I can help with that. Thank you so much, Pepper. I couldn't do without you. Also, what is party? Have you never had a party before? I don't know what that is. You've had a really big meal, right? Yes. Even when fun. I'm told I shouldn't. Well, this is when you, you're told that you can. You can get told that you can? Have a big meal. Mm -hmm. Have a <gasps> sweet. And, um, and there's games. Game. Games. Yes. You know games, right? Kind of. Well, these are bigger games than you ever imagined. More fun. Fireworks. Big shiny lights in the <clears> sky. <throat> Everyone's laughing. They're dancing. Um, sometimes there's costumes. Uh, ooh, costumes. Even we could pick a theme for the party. We'll have to ask Theo because it's his idea. But yeah. if you have an idea, I can make you a costume. I I want a co I want. Can you make me a big dragon? Of course. With wings, please. She just grabs Pepper's face. It's like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know how dogs with big lips have like that smile what kind of wings would you like would you like feather dragon wings fairy wings she looks um, at yours and is like those yeah like mine yes wonderful i, I want to be a princess fairy dragon you will be you are she, she kind wins. of yeah she kind of she tries to <laughs> wink but just goes Yeah, I fucking love Pepper so much. <laughs> but, How does Fritz feel about Pepper? Fritz is like, he's above you flying like, Lazuli, that's a fucking dragon. Are you blind? <laughs> look at it. I know, look at her. Pepper's like. <laughs> well, Lazuli's like maternal instincts are like yeah. full throttle like uh, this is my baby fritz <laughs> is like will is she going to eat me pepper would you eat fritz too skinny okay <laughs> can pepper like fit on the hip yes like, yeah. toddler, like just just a chunky bulldog 
that's lazuli this whole day like it's just pepper on the hip you're uh, carrying yeah you're carrying pepper around and you're you're planning this party okay uh i love that i absolutely love that um so uh i imagine we'll kind of create some space where the group is together to discuss movement everything like that uh breakfast is done i imagine you guys are kind of packing up camp here all right uh ishwar who's just sort of like are we staying here for the day or are we moving you all sort of set the set the initial stage so i i defer to your judgment say move i had a pretty good sight of cyber home and if i can see them <clears throat> any one of them could see us a lucian just sort of nods i have a similar opinion and it looks like they're on higher alert than they were when we were there yesterday. So I would, I would recommend moving as well. Northward, deeper into the mountains, less line of sight. Yes, I I agree with Zio. Um, <clears throat> Zio will look at Whistle. <laughs> Just a very pointed <laughs> look. Whistle, Whistle looks back at Zio. <laughs> It's sort like, of like most of the group is gathered around here, right? Mm -hmm. The group, the group, and all of the NPCs are here. So okay. If you, if you guys want to have a private party conversation, that's one thing. Um, but I'll say let's let's confirm like where we're going first. I just want to make sure everybody's like good, and then we can dive to that, dive into that. So like obviously, uh, Thanderil is like moving seems wise, and Ari and I. He kind of looks at her saddle. We have a way to be unseen in the sky, so I can scout for us if needed. That'd be very useful. He sort of kicks her saddle. She turns invisible. I know we went up north, but we're trying to go... Are we trying to go to Eye of the Lord next? So maybe we can do a white berth and then down. You can come through it the means... river. Oh, yeah. That seems wise to me. Kaylin is just moving works. I think that's... You're all smart. I trust you. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah. Then... <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, as everything's packed up and before every, and like, just as we're about to move, like, camp is packed, everybody's about to get going. Yeah. Whistle just, like, stops and goes, Wait. Hang on. And, uh, looks at Zio. Yeah. Um, I have something to tell everybody. There's a good chance that the Iron Legionnaires, led by the Red Dragon Ezradon, will be descending upon Cyberholm in the near future. The very near future. Okay. This ship, the Alaric, it's out of commission. As a result, they need somewhere to be. Isradan was looking for a base of operations, and I suggest that Cyber Home. I do not another vessel. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was perfectly timed. <laughs> I do kind of like the fact that Lazuli and Akinacia, like, that's the exact same. I don't know what Akinacia actually said, but like that. <laughs> <laughs> Lazuli says, go ahead. <laughs> I just... Why not another vessel if she is a captain? <sighs> I'm not sure, but... I suspect that uh, it was more about per forcing me to do an impossible task 
than anything else. There was a deal. She got Saiva home, and in return, she would leave us alone. And she alluded to being able to help Nikolai. In Echinacea's mind palace, the old and the new pass each other in a hallway, and uh, Echinacea's voice shifts. So, if it, if she doesn't get Saiva home, then she won't leave us alone? Honestly, I doubt she'd leave us alone even if she did get Saiva home. I can't help but feel that every time I do something for her, it simply ensures that she'll try it again. As someone who's not experienced living through the attacks of Iron Legionnaires, I can't help but agree with Whistle that she probably wouldn't have stopped. She would have maybe laid low, made sure to get our defenses low before attacking us when we least expected it. It's not pretty, and Whistle shouldn't have kept this from us. But it's already happened. And I think the best thing for us to do now is prepare. How? Well, <clears throat> the way I see it, if she attempts to take Saiva home right now, she's going to find it otherwise occupied. A conflict between the Iron Legionnaires and the Shadow Court. Thanderil sort of, but it's not just the Iron Legionnaires, is it? It's the Iron Legionnaires and an adult red dragon. That is a completely different equation. Do you know the size of her fighting force? Do I? 60. <clears throat> I could come clean with her. Tell her. That Saiva home is beyond her grasp, and that I'm done. But yes, but then you will forego any protection on yourself, and then exactly. exactly. So, um, from what I understand, she's also after the Divanthia Dome. So, even if I were to give myself up to them, to the Iron Legionnaires, as long as you all possess the tome, <clears throat> you would be in her sights. The tome that Akinesha was killed of. Correct. Lazuli stands, like, closer to Akinesha and a little bit in front, like... 
Kanisha, I think, just clings to Lazuli. How, how do we... How do we make her not want to kill us? How do we... I don't think she wants to kill us. But she uses it as a threat. She may want to kill you after you've changed your deal. That is true. You see Thanderil sort of taking on the more, like, military leader energy. He kind of walks past you, Echinacea, and squeezes your hand, seeing the obvious, like, pain and stress you're in. The outcome for both of these situations is that she is going to want to kill us. Either no, way. the outcome isn't. The outcome for adhering to the initial deal means that you are out of the dragon's sights, you will not be harmed, and there is a hidden benefit that has not been mentioned. An uneasy ally. As I understand it, you are all being tasked against things far beyond scope. Elementals, corrupt entities from the Feywild, the Magus Arcanum, can't go back to Silo home. Can't fight that. Or her. Do you mean to make Isridan our ally? I mean for you to adhere to your word. And to keep them safe. As I've been told that you are capable and willing of. I am. From what I'm understanding, the initial deal means that they will be protected. Yes, but the initial deal means that ancient, very powerful, very dangerous knowledge falls into the hands of Isradon. And then, who's to say she'll respect the deal when she has all the power that she could need? You agreed to give her the entirety of the book. She did only request specific sections, but she didn't specify which. Is there a way we could alter them? Or make a duplicate that... has more Such effect? powers beyond me. I could. I could be quite close. It just isn't the type of magic that could... be too powerful. Like, I, I don't know. I have the ability to fabricate Oh, I have an object as well. Lazuli rummages through her inventory and has something called a psychic document. Displays whatever credentials to the target to expect if they feel it's a DC wisdom, but it could be maybe a. Oh, and yeah. Zio, give me a history ch or, or give me an intel. Or, like, oh my god, a history check with advantage. Me? Sorry. Yes, please. I think I, also I, have one fake dive through to I'm cooking here. Uh, history with advantage. That is a, a dirty 20. Zio, you also have the marvelous pigments. I do. You guys, I, I will say, all of this combined could be enough to create a, con a convincing fake between Fabricate, Lazuli's item, and the Marvelous Pigments. If all of you work together, obviously, Whistle, you have that ingrained keen mind memory of the book. Hmm. With some successful checks, you guys would be able to create a very convincing du duplicate slash edit of the pages that Isradon wants. But we don't know which pages, so we, we would probably just do a whole book. You could probably just do a whole book, exactly. That, that, I, I guess that would probably, I don't know if that'd be harder. What magic? That, that, the DC would change if you guys decided to do the whole book. But versus the pages. The choice is up to you guys. And I will. What? Uh, we'll do David first and then Lou. 
Would Whistle be able to recall any sort of hint as to possibly what pages? Uh, Anything that he might have seen in her in the cabin's quarter, in the captain's quarters, rumors amongst the crew. Give me any a, idea of what magic she seeks. Yeah, give me a history check here. This is okay. gonna be a flat roll. A flat roll, so don't add the modifier? Mm-mm. -mm -mm. Just not advantage or disadvantage. Just a just a Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I have expertise in history. What? Never mind. Disadvantage. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh god. Uh, inspiration. This is my last inspiration. Okay. You burn through those so fast, baby boy. It's really not that much better. Uh, that's a dirty twenty. It's hard to tell. Um, when you go pat, like go through your memories, you recall times of Isradon speaking about how life with legionnaires would be easier if ships could pilot themselves, if mm. the forces could be spent, uh, uh, if the, if the forces' time could be spent on capitalizing on the power they're gaining, the ships can sail themselves. Their lives as conquerors is much easier. Um, she has also talked about um, the need for, beyond her draconic strength and constitution, further protecting herself. Something akin to, like, barding for an animal. Um, mm -hmm. A bit of armor uh, that could keep her safe and, like, constantly stay with her. Um, there is also... Uh, there were also mentions and uh, obviously direct experiences per your session zero with Divanthir mages themselves and the way mm -hmm. that they completely streamline uh, processes, yeah. uh, be it with the ships, with mechanics, with weaponry. Like you won't, you imagine you wouldn't need a team of 15 to 20 people manning cannons. You'll have yeah. one individual mm -hmm. completely handling that. So you can think of like three to four things that really like, mm -hmm. okay, these could be things that she wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Must will just kind of tell the party. And uh, keen mind. Do I remember things like that in the, in the book? Absolutely. Or... Absolutely. Okay. Um, it's interesting. Cause thinking back on the book, you recall something that is not exactly a dragon. Um, they were, uh, keen mind. God, let me grab the name quick. Uh, while Alec like is searching, um, Echinacea is going to hand all, like all four of us, a potion of enhancement. Mm -hmm. And then when you drink it, you are under the effects of enhance ability for, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say 1d4, yeah, 1d4 hours, no concentration required. Um, and you can pick which ability you're having boosted. Echinacea will pick intelligence uh, for any arcana. Whistle will also pick this intelligence is, for history. And this is to to assist our, like, the... Our checks. The, creating the, the fake, yeah. Yeah. Where are you, Potion of Enhancement? Can Lulia assist with sleight of hand like the actual she naturally does a lot of penmanship in her journals and like that that type of like actual book binding like tactile crafting or is this a purely magical thing uh where we're doing arcana rolls um sorry what was that question oh sorry um can the my checks be via sleight of hand or um what is it yeah sleight of hand because it's a lot of like crafting that's what Azuli does. Yeah, I'll allow it. it. I'll allow it. Um, okay. The creatures were called ashen worms. Um, and, and, and you see the imagery. They are essentially a proto dragon species. Um, these very long serpentine forms, two large sets of arms in the front of their body, um, uh, a long neck that sort of crests into this almost volcanic fin like structure um they they are innate like incarnations of like heat metal cold. like they are mm. manifestation manifestations of these concepts which um makes them easily allied with uh, agents that, like the Arethians and the Divanthir empire 
like uh, they were able to create companions and they weren't like beasts of burdens, but they were allies that lived within the mountains of this this pre predated uh, world. Um, and, and yeah, they're, they're very strong, powerful creatures. Uh, you know that ancient dragons to these in these times are gargantuan ashen worms in their ancient stage in this Divanthir Empire were colossal. Cool. A, a, an entirely different beast. Mechagodzilla. I, like, if you've seen the Cloverfield Paradox, you know how in Cloverfield, yeah. like, the initial monster is, like, kind of small in comparison yeah. to this, like, titanous beast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we'll sort of just kind of say all that stuff. Or the um, for the marvelous pigments, um, Zia will if will share with the group that he'll just focus on the outside of the book because it can only um, it can only uh, nothing created by the pigments can have a value greater than twenty five gold pieces. So I'm assuming that like when it comes to like the binding of it or anything, yeah, that would probably be within that parameter. Yeah, absolutely. But nothing on the inside. Okay, and I and I will say. Um, are you guys are you guys beginning travel as you're working on this? I I think so. Yeah. Okay, I just want to yeah, cuz like it, this seems like something that you guys could be doing over travel. Mm -hmm. Um so I want to make sure that we're like kind of Yeah. There's one more thing I did want to mention. Um No, absolutely. You know, um especially like with Thanderil there too. Um one thing that um, I have considered is allowing Isradan and the Shadow Court to meet head on. And we use the aftermath, whichever victors weakened. We can come in and we can be rid of the problem. I can't say for sure that we'll be able to defeat a fully adult red dragon, but it could dwindle her forces. And if she finds us and we have this duplicate, we could just explain to her that we couldn't handle it ourselves. And that we're turning, mm -hmm. we're turning in the book, mm -hmm. knowing that she would have found us eventually. I'm not thinking clearly. I don't know what the right answer is. Th I, Thandral just kind of leans forward. There is no right answer. This is not a problem to fix. Solely with one answer. We work together to find a solution. Take a breath. It's all right. I don't want to die again. I'm not going to let that happen. I don't want any of us to... Huh? I know, I know. I'm not going to let anybody here suffer at the hands of the Iron Legionnaires or Isradon or any fucking thing else for that matter. Not while I'm around. My question is, have you said that before? Yes. And you failed. What is different now? I'm not afraid now. Hmm. Well, use that newfound bravery and tell Isradon that this, the deal has changed. Make her aware of what awaits her at Cyberholm and that you will give her the pages she needs. I'm fine with that. But as you said yourself, she doesn't take kindly to deals changing. Well then, I imagine as her underling you have sucked up before. Maybe avoid your fear. Tap into that. 
you can see it very clearly that Thanderil is not playing with the idea that people will die by Isradon. Mm-hmm. If you recognize the threat that she poses. Absolutely. But... A little, a little grace, Thanderil. This was all kept from you, no? It we was. Could, you could have known about this before you got here. It was, was, but there's been plenty of things before that we have kept from one another, and we've come back around from it. You might have known Echinacea. You might know Echinacea far longer than we all have, but we have been together for the past two and a half months. We have been through a lot. And I understand being worried about their safety. And I understand, Echinacea, you're worried about any of us dying. You just... We just released a sliver of divinity. I know we don't need to be cocky, but we have to have hope on what we're capable of, even if that is protecting ourselves. As simple as that. You must forgive my tone. I learned they died last night. I learned that they were gallivanting around the world with people I do not know in a way that I could not protect. I can now, and I intend to. I mean, no disrespect. But you should understand that I am trepidatious knowing that they died with you all here. If not there is their, a... it's not that it's not their fault and I'm I'm sorry Zio. I'm sorry there's nothing to apologize for if there is a better plan use it what happens when she realizes it's a fake and the spells aren't there or don't work she'll come right back right this is only mitigating. Exactly. That is just why there's a good chance that we have to plan and be aware that regardless of the outcome, he could potentially be out, kill us. Well, I, what if, what if the spells that we put in are bleeding? She's a powerful magician. Right? Or magic wielder. Um, Whistle, well, so you know that she has some magical capabilities, but she's not she's not like Ishwar, right? Like mm -hmm. Ishwar is, is akin to a wizard. Um mm -hmm. he, he has a much more vast uh spell repertoire. She yeah. has like some primordial current magic given her draconic heritage like mm. uh, imagine stuff you guys saw from wit last night right like a wall of fire or a fireball or whatever mm -hmm. but nothing nothing incredibly it's purely offensive she's a half caster if it were to somehow backfire or if we could basically poison or the spoils that we're giving her like a trojan horse whatever that is mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite bit whatever that um, is <laughs> I, um <laughs> then her guards are down she's excited she wants to quickly do these spells but if it's actually something else and i don't but i don't know what i i can fabricate the text to make it say that the magic therein requires rituals that take at least a year lots of spells require a very long time to cast and i i am capable i have magic that creates a false magical aura that i could infuse and make appear divanthir in nature you're brilliant i i just i i've just nope <laughs> I'm scared. Well, I think that would... Compliment when... Ganesha. Hmm? What did you say, Angie? Oh, I was just saying that Ganesha can accept the compliment. 
I accept the compliment. I apologize. <laughs> Don't apologize as he like grabs them by their shoulders. Hey, stop apologizing. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to say you're sorry. We're just, you know, surviving. If anyone should apologize, it's me. Exactly. Say you're sorry. I am sorry to all of you. You are escaping bonds. You're breaking chains. It's not your fault that you're being chased. I don't need an apology from you. But an apology is needed when things are kept from us. You can still Good be things can be. Go ahead, Lizzie. I was sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just, she was just chiming in saying you can still be hurt. But... You can still be hurt. And also, two things can be true at the same time. <clears throat> uh, Thanderil just sort of. Echinacea, you're, you're handed a bottle which has chilled tea in it. This smells so nice. <laughs> Lavender chamomile. Still your favorite, if I remember correctly. Just take a sip and know that your fear is valid. There's nothing wrong with being afraid, but your friends are right. At least this is a threat you are facing together. And you can plan, and you can prepare. If it'll help, maybe I can give a distraction. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I don't like that one bit. I don't like that even a little. Taking a flight on Ari? Scouting? You don't like that? Invisible, unable to be seen. She's a dragon! Ari. He means now. He's talk oh. He's talking about... <laughs> I thought uh, he was talking about distracting a dragon. No, he, he's talking about a distraction for Echinacea's anxiety. Uh. <laughs> yes, please. I misunderstood. That is all right. You have a lot going through your brilliant mind. It gets cold, so I'd recommend a jacket. Uh, Thanderil does bow in respect. I apologize for my bullheadedness. Your apologies are necessary. I agree with what you said. And accepted. We will watch the skies and make sure that um, we are unseen as we progress. All right. May I have 10 minutes? Yeah. You guys are kind of moving along. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, like you guys are moving along, so you have the time if you so choose. Echinacea telepathic bonds with everyone okay. just while they're in the uh, sky in case things happen. Okay, yeah, you telepathic bond and you uh, connect with everybody. Um, I just want to check before we go to our second break. Um, are folks working on the things they planned for Isradon? I would, yeah, if okay. like we want to do that now, yeah. Uh, yeah, since you guys, you guys came up with a really good plan. Like, I, yeah, I don't want to take that away from anybody. So um, I'm going to say, Whistle, you're going to get, since you have Keen Mind, you are going to give me a, a an intelligence check with advantage. Okay. 
Everybody has advantage from their enhancement potions. Oh, that's right. You gave enhancement potions. Thank you. Uh, Zio, you are going to give me a sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand, of yep. course. Um, Lazuli, you are going to do the same, since that is a role you advocated for, and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Echinacea, you are going to give me an Arcana check. This is a history check that I'm making, right? Intelligence. Intelligence. Because you're, what you're essentially doing is trying to copy what is from, like, the, the details of the book and make sure they're clear and consistent with what you have in your keen mind. Okay. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, then if it's just an intelligence check, it's 18 plus 3 for 21. Okay, 21. Uh, Angie? Uh, that was a nat 19 nice. plus 9, so a 28. Okay. Uh, Lou? What was the boost of our you, you, um, again? You get advantage. 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 Okay. Uh, I got a dirty 20. All right, Echinacea? 23, Arcana. Ooh! Okay, you guys had to get a cumulative uh, over 60 on your rolls. You guys rolled an 82. So, your plan, as it, as it stands right now, is successful. You guys are able to create a copy of the book or of the, the specific pages that you imagine Isradon would want. I believe you're making the whole book. Um, but that's going to take a bit of travel time. So that is going to be like what everybody is up to um, while they're traveling. So uh, until we kind of settle down. All right, cool. Nice job, everybody. That's a very that's a very smart plan. Uh, all right. We are going to go ahead and take our last break here. Thanks, guys, for chilling out. Thanks for hanging. And we'll see you guys shortly. Bye bye. Goodbye.
we left the crew they uh began to create uh their own individual parts of the uh fake uh divanthir tome to give to isradon um <clears throat> uh currently everybody is working on these things I in the caravan i imagine uh whistle zeo and lazuli are in you know the your the faded carriage and, and kind of growing uh echinacea you're sort of sitting in front of Thanderil uh, on Ari and he's just got his arms kind of around you, over you, as you guys are flying and, and, and looking around. Do you want to talk or not? You don't have to. I'm not ready to die. A part of me wonders if Part of me wonders is if everything I do is born of cowardice. If I want to preserve life just because I'm afraid to die. I don't think that's true. I think... I think life is worth living, but you can... You can explain anything away. I think you can be afraid... of death and still cherish life. I think they're allowed to be separate things. Echinacea, you What I can tell you is that your love of life did not stem from a fear of death. I know that for a fact. You once told me that, um... <laughs> you and your brother, when you were children, there was a pair of, um, birds outside of your home in Sunwall. They didn't migrate when they should have. They were faced with a harsh Telesian winter. They were sick. <clears throat> Colors began to fade. You and Dolan brought them inside. Sage and Poppy taught you how to nurse it back to health. <clears throat> and you told me <laughs> many times because I loved hearing that story of you and Dolan working together for a shared cause. Your mothers nurturing such a beautiful person with kind and good intention. It wasn't for the fear of their death. It's just so they could... It was just so that they could fly tomorrow. Because maybe that day would be an even more beautiful one. 
I believe that you cherish life because life is rife with opportunities. Opportunities to learn, grow, change, and see so much. If you die, you don't get those things. So it may not be direct causation, but I don't think that is a having a fear of death. I don't believe that that is a cowardice. I believe it is rational. And you, he sort of squeezes around you. Your experience is so fresh, I can't imagine the struggle that you are going through, and I'm sorry. It's not easy. I learned you brought me back to life before. I have. Thank you. Kisses I'm on the cheek. It was the scariest day of my life. I don't remember it. I don't have that time back yet. <clears throat> it was a time where, um... You had made it very clear that you wanted to join Lorian and I on a front. We were low on medical staff, and you very kindly offered. I was a bit bullheaded, and was afraid for you. Some things don't change, I think. Because I care about you. And I know that you are a person that is going to make this world along with the people that you choose to make it a more beautiful one. I know that's why Minri loves you so much. How did I die? Are you in the space to hear it? I want to know. It was a... We were contending with a spy faction from Zendrix. Agents... Agents d opposed to the Lorethian line of knights. Obviously, given the information you've given me, Kervath betrayed Aroshni. We were staking out an outpost in Zendrix. Enemy territory was dangerous, which is why you were very surefire about joining us. We were undersupplied and we, frankly, needed your help. You were poisoned along with four other people in our encampment. There was a, a traitor in our midst. I had gone on patrol and Lorian had um, agreed to take Ari out. We had, he looks very disappointed. We had left you alone. We had left all of you alone. And the assassin was successful, but thankfully we were able to save everyone. You included. Thank you. Of course. Have you ever fought a dragon? Twice. How'd that go? I mean, you're alive. First, it, it went all right. First time I ran. <laughs> first time I ran, and the second time... The second time I was successful in felling the beast. But I was not alone. I was with other... It was a, it was a worm in, um, in Aladil. It, um, it sundered my home. The place I grew up. I had failed to protect it, but I did not fail in avenging it. 
I'm so sorry. Thank you. That was a long time ago. Was that when I... When, when I failed you, when I... Oh, God. I don't know what's real. I... You, re you remember that. I was angry and I spoke stupidly. I was... In that moment, I was tasked by Kervaith to prove my worthiness to him. To take the honor of going to my home and protecting it. And let me tell you something, you and Lorian, I failed. I failed, you did not. I was angry and I was sad and I said something cruel when I shouldn't have. Amidst a mountain of pain and loss, I said something cruel. And I'm sorry. I apologize to you already, but I need to do so again. I, 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 I know that Zia would yell at me, but Zia's not here. Um, I don't <laughs> need an apology. <laughs> I respect that you feel you do not need an apology. From what I understand, the last month you have been worried about me killing you. And that is because you have received pieces of memory that paint me as a villain. Because I am not a perfect man. I have spoken ill in anger and sadness. And for those times where I have been a lesser man, a lesser partner, I am sorry. I will not apologize further. I will take the words of Zio to heart. But know that I have become a far better communicator. And Echinacia will just nestle in to both Dan and Ari mm -hmm. and watch the wind whip past yeah. and stare at the horizon and wonder if a dragon is coming. Uh, give me a perception check to do watch with Than. Oh, no, I meant that in like a rhetorical sense. Okay. Well, you guys were up there uh, to, you yeah. guys were up there to <laughs> scout anyway. Ah, okay, no, you're right, you're right. Um, oh, questioning 20, unnatural 20. Nice, okay. Uncertain 20. All right, so, over the mountain ridge, what you see is a beautiful snowy day. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing is happening. No dragon in sight. Um, you see the forces. <laughs> you see the forces at Cyberhomer. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> it's, you, it was the music change too. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, being, I, was I was like, being an asshole. I was being an asshole. Not like cheeky. Jail, actually. Prison. Lock, lock me up. Lock me up. Um, so, it, no, it, it is a beautiful snowy day, but you can see that the weather is getting a bit more... Um, uh, it's less than ideal for travel. Snow is starting to pick up. The winds are beginning to whip a bit more. It's getting colder and colder, even to the point where you, Thanderbill and Ari, have to dip lower to the ground to sort of uh, not get, you know, battered by by hail and ice. Um, but you know that with that view obscured, you imagine the same is true for Sivaholm. They're not seeing you right now, and you, you see no dragon in sight. Other than Ishwar. Maybe we should return so I can start crafting a lie. A deception. Let's go. <laughs> what fun. Um, okay. And I'll say, since uh, the others are kind of doing that, we will expedite travel here. Um, you guys travel, um, g everybody give me a survival check here. And I'll roll for, like, uh, Ishor, who is leading the, the caravan here. Oh! I love it when the dice tell a story. Natural 20 on Ishor. That makes sense. He knows these mountains like the back of his butt. 29. How do you... Okay. 
Nine. Nine. Uh, eight. Eight. Fuck. Okay. I said that. I did not uh, survive. Your, a survival check. I did not yeah. survive. Booty for me. Why is everybody rolling booty? Hey, Some people aren't good at it. Some people aren't rangers. A lazuli yeah. got a twenty-nine. <laughs> Baby girl. Seven. Uh, so, okay, so was no, is that is that a seven eight nine? <laughs> yeah. All right, level up for that. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Shut up. No. Oh, yeah. um, Lazuli, between you and Ishwar, this is your home. This is a place you know so deeply, intimately. You see the crevices in the mountain where you and Ishor have traveled down uh, during some of your earliest days uh, within his care as his ward. Um, you, you remember times being sort of ferried down on the back of a large uh, silver feathered dragon. Um, uh, the first time you've uttered the word Onkin being on the slopes that you're sort of climbing up now. Um, but yeah, you guys... <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, yeah, you travel for the next, we'll say, are you looking to travel a couple hours here to gain that distance? Because we'll say we can kind of end the day after like four to six hours of travel. If you guys are just looking to get the fuck away. Okay. Um, you guys... And you manage to find yet another, like, nook across the mountain. And actually, because I know the goal is Iotha Lore, so you guys are kind of on the other side now here uh, on this mountain ridge on the map here. Um, so you you have moved further away from Saivaholm. You are now over this crest, but still within a pretty reasonable distance to Iotha Lore. Obviously, you don't want to separate too much from that. Um, but yeah, for the night, uh, you guys hunker down each and every one of you have have completed your goal with that with those roles that uh, we discussed earlier so the night's beginning to wind down Can lou oh uh, i don't mean to interrupt i was just what's up oh I, just whenever you're done i was gonna cross uh prim primeval awareness. uh god you're so i you genius you okay um so uh, the night begins to settle. You can see that obviously with winter, like uh, you guys are hitting sunset quicker, you know, than normal. Um, but each of you have kind of uh, settled into another nook um, further away. There's a, a, a far larger sense of security here. Um, but you see as Ishroar, um, as you guys are kind of lifting in altitude here, uh, you see as he plucks from the sky clouds. And he begins to construct a small little venue for your party. Um, you see, as he creates like an awning above, he begins to sort of like craft the, some structures for you guys to settle in. There's like a large um, sitting room. There's a bar. There's a kitchen. You guys are also, and it's all in the flavor of like the, the Ishwar's Victorian style castle. Um, so you're all sort of like beginning to see as he in his draconic visage, like you can see as the snow is like reflecting off of him. It's almost as if he's perfectly camouflaged here. Like uh, even if people could see, they're not going to spot him right away. You see as he's just plucking and making sure that everything is set for you all. Um, yeah, but I will say with that, the evening is yours. Um, can Zio, during the travel at some point, uh, switched back to their uh, winged boots? And then You can um, absolutely have done that through travel. Like, yeah, because I know that a lot of people switch there. You guys can take that time to reattune and uh, absolutely, please. Thank you, Angie. That's a good point. Yeah, and then um, I feel like they would, just out of curiosity, like fly up and watch as Ishwar's doing all this. Yeah, yeah, you see a very clear view as he kind of looks and nods in your direction as he's taking like a very delicate amount of time. Obviously, like a party is probably going to take place here in the next couple hours. He's he's yeah. taking all of that time. And you can tell he's mustering more magic because he's not in his home. So like this is a bit harder for Ishwar to do. Uh, this is expending a lot of energy, but he is excited to cultivate a space where you all can revel in a victory well earned. Um, he knows how hard this has been for everybody. And he's like, you can see it, it's very clear. And if anybody else is watching Ishra in this moment, this is a man 
who has, for the first time in his life, created for others. He's creating a space for everybody here to just exist and to have fun and to be safe. Um, this is this is him sort of branching out of his uh, his more reclusive like building solely for himself. It's a small action, but it is a it is a shift for Ishra. A note of that conversation that he had with you, Lazuli. And for primeval awareness, you use your spell slot. Other than Ishror, you're not getting a ping on anything. You're far enough away from Saivaholm to where you're not picking up anything there. Um, there's nothing in the near vicinity that you are hitting on within six miles, I'll say. Shared with the group. Okay. So everyone can feel rest easy. Everybody, you know that you are you are very safe in this position. How awkward would it have been if we walked closer to Isra <laughs> We just like met her in the way, along the way. Huh. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Zia's gonna like fly down um, mm -hmm. after like watching all that um, to wherever Isadra is. Uh, yeah, he's kind of he's he's cold. He's got a big jacket on, kind of up over his ears, and he's just kind of like setting up the carriage. He's like, I'm not sleeping in the fucking snow. Absolutely not. We could maybe I could what? get to his speak to Kanisha and we can pull out the humble abode. I don't think you've seen that. Humble abode? No, I ha I don't believe I have. Oh well, we're gonna be sleeping good tonight. I love sleeping good, <laughs> especially after hard nights. I'll mention it to Echinacea, see if we can pull it up. Perfect. I think it seems like we're pretty safe now. It feels like it. The tension is... less. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll have some time to relax. That will be good. Much needed, yeah. much deserved. Do you still have the water Amine with you? Yes. I think they are happily resting. But I imagine after the party I will make a walk down to the river. Set them free. Will you save me a dance during the party? I had no doubt. Absolutely. I imagine there will be a lot of dancing and plenty of opportunities. Yes, I will. Zia's like got this sort of like like purplish almost tone. Mm -hmm. Like that's like just flushing. Um and they like they kinda like instinctively like scratch at the uh feathers under brow. Um uh, and then just kind of peter off. They're just yeah. like <laughs> hey, run, they scare. <laughs> Yeah, they skitter away. This is in a very similar way as a uh, when they were first sort of um, uh, vibe checking Isandra. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Love that. <laughs> Great callback. Okay, yeah, you kind of scuttle off and start setting up camp yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, what are we up to? Um, can I have round up a few of the crew? Uh, I think I'm thinking specifically Lucian and Durwood. Um, I think uh, somewhere in the you know the party space, there is a table. We all have you know about maybe six tankards of ale in front of us each. Okay. And there is a dartboard, and oh, we're throwing guys, and uh, we're basically like playing horse. Oh, incredible. Except you drink when you lose. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. the three of you, are, Derwood's like, ah, it's actually quite unfair. I am a marksman by trade. Well, marksman, that's your target. And this is your weapon. And hands him a dagger. You know, I grew up using darts as weapons. I thought they were far more effective than arrows, but I am an idiot. And he throws it at the dartboard. We'll see if Durwood hits. No, it doesn't. It particularly hits the ground. He's like, younger Durwood is an idiot, and I was wrong. Give me my cup. <laughs> he starts, <laughs> starts drinking. Echinacea walks past, and if I can try to sleight of hand... No, actually, wait, I have a thing. 
They're going to subtle spell cast True Strike on Lucian. And just like, get him. So he just kind of, <laughs> he, he sort of leans back, winks. Thank you, good doctor. And he just. All right. Come on, Lucy. Let's see what you've got. Oh, you are far, far, far fucked. <laughs> Takes a dagger out of his pocket, throws it. <laughs> and he. His advantage. Y- yep, I just rolled advantage. You see, as it hits right true in the middle, and he says, "Ah, <laughs> fuck you! You doubted me. What are you, my sister?" <laughs> oh. Well, anyway, my turn. yeah, you, yeah, you. Fuck you, whistle. You're going to miss you, stupid fuck. So this oh, is the he's one like occasion. Screaming in your ear, like wow, wow, wow. Go ahead. Normally, I have sharpshooter on. I'm not going to have sharpshooter on, so I'm actually going to throw up my full bonus for once. Okay. Yay! Also, it's Nikolai. <laughs> Nikolai, yeah, Nikolai's like, oh, we're going to show this pompous little shithead what it means to strike true. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Whistle's going to look at the target, turn around. Put a hand over his eyes and <laughs> throw Nikolai towards it. You, you see as Nikolai at the tail end of the dagger um, sprouts these metallic like feathered fins to like guide his shot. Uh, you see as it just it breaks through Lucian's uh, dagger, knocks it out of position, hits right where his was. Lucian's like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> You're cheating. You can literally talk to your knife. Nikolai, sorry. No, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, and Whistle's just going to have Nikolai just reappear in his hand. <laughs> Good. I like to see that idiot upset. Tell him that it was a tell him it was a foul and now he has to drink. You can tell him. The, the prelude lets you speak. It's a foul, you idiot. Now drink up. <laughs> he seems like... What the fuck? Oh, he starts drinking. He looks at uh, Echinacea as you're passing by. He's like, uh, we tried. Honestly, that was a delight <laughs> to see. Drink if Whistle up. sees that, he's <laughs> drink drink yeah. Whistle sees that. Doctor, if you're going to play, you should play. All right. Um, Echinacea takes out the guys to Klinga. Bless you. Yep. <laughs> Second thought. Um, I kind of... What? No, I'm just laughing. Go ahead. Um, they take out their Geister Klinga and they use it. They use the spiritual weapon version to slowly float up and go right in the center. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, everybody's like, <laughs> the blade expands into this ghostly, sh- like, long sword. And as a Lucian's like, oh, they're going to fuck. Just do, 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 do. it's yeah, very it's, slowly it's bobbing, like, but then yeah. it just it like makes certain it's the exact center and then sticks in like just barely. <laughs> you, kind of, <laughs> you kind of like adjust where the spots the other daggers went in, just thump. <laughs> Lucian goes. I don't think that counts, but I did it. Lucian's like <laughs> counts. Uh, Whistle's gonna cheers Lucian and Durwood. <laughs> The three men drink, they throw it back, and they're like, ah, to the doctor! <laughs> Impeccable <To> aim! <laughs> um, <laughs> incredible. I love that. Um, Wazuli, anything for you? Please. I'm making costumes. Ooh, who wants costumes? That's amazing. <laughs> yes. Everyone's like, me! Dress me. <laughs> Lazuli? Uh, so are we... The person who did the character art is making costumes? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, my question to the party. Are these costumes surprises? Lou? Surprise me. Whip it yes. up. Wait, am I surprising them? Or yeah. do you yeah. want... You're surprising Your them costumes. costumes. Dress okay, me. You know how we have all the disguise, like we have all the hats of disguise, and mm-hmm. is that like something you can change kind of at will, or like, or is it, or, yeah. or is it one hat? It's always a hat, like for that disguise. Uh, uh, we're having fun. I'll say, give me an Arcana check, and we can kind of shift things around a bit if you'd like. Okay. We're having um, fun. We're celebrating a victory. I'll Absolutely. assist you with the Arcana check. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. And I still have um, an inspiration. And I'm supposed to have an arcana. Okay, that's a 13. I'll do it again. 18. So 25. Um, oh, okay. 25. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Costumes. So, obviously... Um, and I have disguise self and stuff, so if I want to give, and I can make some myself instead of just using the hat, but, um, I'm thinking Lazuli is going to be in red, and she's going to have, like, little red dragon wings, um, mm. <laughs> and it's going to kind of, like, have, like, a little, like, shimmery number that looks like scales, um, just to like match <laughs> to pepper. pepper. Yeah. And pepper is going to be matching lazuli with like little fairy wings. Um, and is going to be, she'll ask what type of like, does she want to be a, a bigger red dragon or is there any other color that she'd like to be? She's just like, I'm as big and red as I want to be. Cause that's what she had asked for is to be a big, red dragon she so. she's speaking with like a more childlike vocabulary so she's strictly mm -hmm. talking about wanting wings oh, which I see. in her mind makes her a big dragon right so Lizzie is going to give uh pepper glittery wings just like hers she just um, sort of like she's very walking shoulder first and just like i'm flying well, then, lily's not going to add her wings but she will have pepper has horns right yeah She'll wear pe pepper horns. Oh, incredible. Yeah. Oh. Spicy yeah. demon succubus lazuli. <laughs> hey, yo! Dragon mommy, but not in the way you think. Not in the way you think, yeah. <laughs> Literal dragon mother. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to give Lucian a golden bat costume. Oh, incredible. <laughs> like, I'm imagining like a big golden bat Kigurumi. <laughs> like, just. Yeah. I guess, like, it's more like I'm going to pick the themes and you guys can take. In, okay, then I like that. Flavor if you want, um, how silly versus how serious, if that sounds good to you. Because I, yeah. I want to yeah. see your all's creativity, but I also want to give you something wacky. I love that. We love a prompt. Um, okay, so Lucian yeah. Golden Bat. Got it. Lucian Golden Bat. Um, Zio. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no, no. Wit Mushroom. <laughs> Wit's like, mushroom. I'm not putting on that fucking hat. Get away from me. <laughs> it's just like a toad hat. Wow! <laughs> 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 If you guys want to actually, uh, I want to work on this list. If you guys want to do your role play, I'm going to make a, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> Very true. Um, I was, uh, I think Zio's going to go um, to get the bonfire going. Okay, yeah. Um, so they would go over to uh, where like the wood and everything has been gathered. And I think Zio's going to try doing what like they saw Asandro doing. Yeah. With like speaking to the, the fire. Um, and trying to get a smokeless fire, but also trying to get like the the rolling of um, this. Uh, go ahead and give me a give me a wisdom check here. Yeah, just straight up wisdom. Straight up wisdom. And what do you say? So uh, Zio gets Zio's like kind of like getting in and like pushing like the um, the uh, wood closer to one another, and then. Um, kind of like snaps their fingers uh to do the, like a fire bolt but it's more like kind of like a quick sort of like spark yeah yeah, um, yeah. and then um let's see what i get uh 13 not 13 plus four so then that was 17 17 um and zia says if you can provide a little bit of liveliness Without the signal, please join us in our dance tonight. 
you see as uh, the little bit of flame licks up off of the kindling. Liveliness? Party? I heard that sometimes you fire an amine can look like dancing. Like you are dancing during a bonfire. I would like to see that. If you would please. You see as like the form of a small humanoid person uh, manifests and you see the little shimmy of a shoulder and it's just like, oh, you're asking us to show off. That we can do. They begin to spin and as they do, like uh, this smoke-like gown uh, like picks up and spins around very much like a salsa dance where it just like licks up and twists completely around the physical yeah. form and the dance just picks up between these amine as like four or five forms go up they link arms and just begin to do uh, a dance around the, the kindling like consuming it as a whole and uh, yeah smokeless fire is achieved it's just like laughing it's just like laughing like just kind of like, kind of like bouncing from side to side. Just kind of like, ha, ha, ha. just like letting like, ha, like the elbow. Yeah, you guys. The elbow <laughs> you, yeah, you guys are you guys are able to see um, the the f same thing that Isandro accomplished. The the smokeless fire has been uh, activated by Zio. <laughs> Bravo, Zio! Did you did you talk to the Omni? I asked them nicely, and they said that they wanted to show off. I'm very impressed. You've been asking people to ask nicely since day one of us knowing each other. That's very true. Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> the classic Zio cackle. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Perfect. All right. Um, e each of you can see a standaril begins to um, set up a tattooing station. You see as he sits down, there's a chair that he's kind of propped up. I'll be open in about five minutes, if anyone's interested. And Zio, did you want to go first? Oh. Yes, you have your tattooing kit. Yes. And then, like, Zio will, like, rush over to, like, where their stuff is. And to go grab their <laughs> like, little box and come run, <laughs> running out, like, with their little box. And remember, the price for a tattoo is a story from your journeys. I'd love to get to know you more. Um, he immediately makes himself comfortable. But please, <laughs> leave me enough energy so I can dance with my walking garden. All right, Zio. What would you like and tell me your story? Like Zio hands over the, uh, the kit. Yep. And says, I'm not really sure how this works. I wanted on my thigh. And then we'll point to the area on their left thigh where they had been struck by the by the, the door. Um, the door. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that was part of uh part of their scars was also through yep. their left thigh. Yep. So to get covered over that scar. Absolutely. What what's what's the concept here? What would you like? Mm. I think beating the odds. Mm. I can tell you how I got the scar. You want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and let, if I understand, you have the you want the text beating the odds. Uh, no. Or the, just the as, like, a concept. As a concept. Mm -hmm. And this is the ghost step tattoo also, yeah. so... Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, Not quite sure. We'll, we'll workshop the... Okay, the design, the design but... Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And so as Zio, um, kind of lays back, uh, comfortably and, like, pulls up... It's very cold out here, but, like, I feel like Zio is also... <laughs> Man, Zio is pantless right now. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of had to drop trowel a bit yeah. if, it, if it's a fucking. Um, I I will. They're close to the fire. Yeah, true. Yeah. Close to the fire, and, and given the structure that Ishor is creating, mm -hmm. uh, you guys are really protected from the elements here, and, and are kind nice. of garnered like similar effects. It's not nearly as complete as his home, but like you guys are given the the warmth and protection of like a cabin, right? So like yeah. you're not you're not like fighting the elements here. 
Nice. Um, and Zio is going to uh, say, I have this one and also this one here. Uh, yeah, yeah. One in my chest and one in my stomach. They all happen at the same time. Oof. It was the first time I died. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, that's not the end of the story. <gasps> so, I remember being in the in-between. I don't know what everyone else's looks like. Mine was a big expanse of water mm. with Mother's Hearth out in the distance. Ah. If you've ever been to the Scorched Isle. Oh, yeah, sure. it's beautiful. Yes. And I was sitting there thinking to myself that this is exactly where I wanted to be. And then appeared your walking garden. And they made a staircase of starlight for me to come back to them. They have this way of making you feel loved and important, don't they? I've taken that for granted a few times. clear that they care. I implore you to cherish it and respect it. I'm doing my best to do so. Learning and change is only something we can do. Learning from mistakes. And that's what this was. A mistake. Mm. So, a lesson. A lesson. Well, I'm glad that they brought you back. I'm glad you did not stay dead long, and I must admit I've never walked on Starlight with them, so I must try it. Oh. You might have to die first. Don't do that. <laughs> you might have to die. Don't actually do that. I, I said it. I spoke far too soon. Um, but Zio, we can obviously touch back on what the design of this tattoo mm -hmm. is, but after a couple hours, you are tattooed via this tattoo machine. Yeah. Oh. A little sore, but they're yeah. gonna hobble off. As you <laughs> like walks, Thandra's like- <laughs> Still pantless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like in their undies, but it's like it needs to. <laughs> I recommend laying down and rinsing it with water in about an hour. And then miss the party? You know what, you're right. Walk around here in your panties. <laughs> Zero's like literally in like little short their little shorts. <laughs> <laughs> little booties out. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Can Lazuli find uh Zio right at that moment? Yeah. Like, actually, um if you if you would like a costume theme, I have one for you. And I think oh. it's quite fitting. What would that be? How about only mint? What does that you mean? Know, <laughs> well, you have all these nice tattoos, and I remember in the bathhouse, you were able to obscure yourself in such a fashionable way. Oh my god, am I getting the anime, uh, the, the anime cloud? <laughs> yeah, it, but I think it's a mint leaf. Oh, it's mint yes. paper or only amine, like if you want to have them, like, <laughs> whatever you want to do. It. Yes, Zio's you know, like... Okay, it starts taking off clothes. <laughs> you see Zio, they're, they're quickly. <laughs> you see Thandral go. Fabulous handiwork, Thandral. As she observes the fire. Of course. <laughs> I can show off all of my brand new tattoos. Yes, there you are. There you are. Ooh, uh, are you pink? Be free in your nudity. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, like a little leaf. <laughs> Who is next? <laughs> like a costume, your theme is Rose. Mine? Yes. Ah, uh, takes it. Uh, you see as Thanderil uh, puts his hair up and tucks the rose behind it. And you then see that he is adorned in um, a very beautiful collection of red, gold, and um, 
uh, red and gold robes with these be this beautiful mantle of like uh, um, pastel blue starlight. Um, as he just sort of like has this small shawl over his shoulder, it's like it's very uh, like formal Japanese in in aesthetic, um, mm. and he's just sort of ah, oh, I quite like it. I think it suits you. Thank you. You are beautiful, but you have thorns. We all do. I speak of the moment when you sought to protect Echinacea. It is admirable. I must thank you, Luzuli, for, th for bringing them back. I was told that you fought for them to live. And for that, he kind of claps his hand on top of yours. I cannot thank you enough. This world is a far more beautiful place with Echinacea Belrose in it. Couldn't agree more. Would you? Yeah, yes, they are. Well, once you're done delivering your outfits, if you'd like a tattoo, I'm right here. I wouldn't know what to pick, but I'll think on it. Thank All you. Right. Whistle like an Asia? Me? Okay. Um, Whistle, I, I think, had hit a losing streak over at the yeah. You're a little dark board. Uh, you and Lucian are both kind of drunk. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. So I think Whistle like stumbles over towards Thandril, um, and I think he's just gonna kind of plop down in the chair. Uh, and he's just gonna <sighs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> are you giving me creative liberty here, Whistle? Yeah. <laughs> where would Jeez. you where would you like it? Mm, surprise me. Turn around. Unrobe yourself. Alright. Drops the, the cloak and uh his armor. He's just kind of sitting there in his trousers. In his yeah. And now what's your story? Your payment? Did you know that Ithraton would not actually be the first dragon I fought? I would not know that. Tell me more. In fact, I got my ass kicked by another dragon. <laughs> now, who would this dragon be? None other than Belgon the Gilden Fire. Really? Indeed. It would be an honor to be beaten by such a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, tell me the excruciating details of your loss. <laughs> uh, I thought I was being clever. I thought I had him. I caught him in a net and trapped him with an immovable rod. Well, that is... I am far less worried for Echinacea's safety, for all of your safety, given that. An immovable rod and a net. Incredible. Yeah, I, I thought it was too, but then... <laughs> Drunk then, Whistle has my whole heart. Do you know what the worst spell in the world is, Thanderil? Silvery Barbs. It's close, but no. <laughs> oh, you you're see. wrong. Oh, all right. It's fucking Misty Step. <laughs> oh, Misty... I am a misty step, uh, a misty step enjoyer myself. Uh, so I apologize. It's been quite helpful in a pinch. Uh, that spell is ruined too. I find brilliant traps. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spoken like a true GF. <laughs> <laughs> those, those, uh, a whistle, you sit kind of drunk. It, 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 the drunkle energy coming off of Whistle right now is like incredible. Uh, after about an hour, um, each of you are able to see a uh, a shield tattooed onto Whistle's back um, with golden scales sort of making up the details. Uh, very much a in reference to 
his bout with Pelgana and the clear reverence that that someone like Whistle has for an individual like that. Can he have covered up the old? Uh, yeah, Richard on absolutely, tattoo? absolutely. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, there you are. What does it look like? <laughs> He's trying to like drunkenly like stumbling around the fire, trying to look at his back. I tattooed a tail to your lower back. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> he, he explains the design. No, it is much cooler than that. Thank you, Thunderell. You are welcome, Whistle. Cheers. He, you see as he pulls out this uh, almost gourd-like bottle. The shots, everyone. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Can Echinacea try to do something in this moment? Yes, please. Um, they have had an idea for a gift for Whistle, and... He's drunk for the first fucking time, so this is maybe the time when they can get away with it. Um, <laughs> they want to sleight of hand Nikolai, and they would like to enlist Nikolai's help if they're able. Give me a sleight of hand with advantage. Whistle, give me a perception check with disadvantage, please. Easy peasy. With the way I've been rolling tonight, there's a natural I, one. I on only have a roll. plus one. Oh! And well, 16 on the second. Natural one. Natural one. Okay, well, then 17... Plus one, 18 is yeah. going to beat that. You, you yoink Nikolai and he says, Oh, hello there, my friend. How are you? I am doing so well. I know Whistle's a little drunk, but... A, a little? A very drunk, but... I was almost I getting want... a contact drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Could I give you two the opportunity to dance here? That would be the most treasured gift. And the first thing Echinacea does is cast um, Animate Object. Ah! The second oh. thing they do is cast Major Image to make it look like uh, Nikolai using oh. Aedwolf's ability to concentrate on a second spell. Dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You can do that? Totally. Um, sorry. Wow. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. This visage is only going to last for ten minutes. Ten minutes is something I never thought I'd have. I promise you we'll have more than that. Someday. He leans down and gives you a kiss on the cheek. Thank you, my dear. Go get him, Nikolai. Turn starts running. Uh, whistle. Mm. You see running towards you for the first time in just under a month. Nikolai. <sighs> Whistle's just... No words. I think he, he stops chasing his tail. He hugs and just kisses you. We will have this again. This is not a dream. This is not an omen. This is a spoiler. I cherish this. This spoiler. Yes, do I? The two of you dance and, and uh, it, I imagine it's incredibly slow and tender and close and towards the tail end of that 10 minutes, Nikolai just leans to your ear Whistle, I love you. And I love you. Is 
This is what hope feels like. Never forget it. Because whether I look like this or not, I am by your side through all of it. I think with that, they finished like a twirl. Yeah. You know, and then he's just holding the, the dagger in his hand at the end of it. Okay. The end of the 10 minutes, all of you see as Nikolai shifts from that form back into the dagger. But I think the dance continues. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, inspiration point to the both of you. Yep, that was incredible. Dude. I'm tender. Button. You're cruel. <laughs> it's the... Yay! Lucian approaches Thanderil, um, and he sits down. I've always been told to get tattoos, but I would like one. That's my choice, please. Thanderil says, of course. What would you like? I want... A knight's helm, please. Right here. It's his chest. Hmm? Any details? Yes. The helm has two bat wings on the side. It has a clockwork rim on the base of the neck. It has a rose on the crest. Small Damascus detailing accompanying the clockwork. And small wings on the side. Please. Thanderil nods. An homage to friends is a very good inspiration for a tattoo as he begins his work Lucien this is a bit more detailed this takes a little bit more time um, but it, it is done look I picked it it's mine I picked it oh it's beautiful don't touch it also what story did he tell um, he told <clears throat> Lucien told the story of um, him surprising the group in a fight because he he was also told, I imagine, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. he was like, they were temporary <laughs> panic. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. The group was in grave danger, and I swooped in, and they showed me I can be a person, all of them, and that I could choose what I wanted to do, and so I haven't left. Because I don't want to. Because I love these people. Thanderil's we like, love you. Oh, he's like. Oh. Thank you. Lucian puts on his bat attire, and you see a golden reflection of the bat armor that he has had tattooed on him by um, Thanderil. <clears throat> Aura's like, I want two guns on my hips. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, right on the hip bone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Iconic. Uh, and he's like, all right. <laughs> He says, oh, of course. Uh, he starts doing it. Uh, during that time, I feel like Zia would, fight, would put their clothes back on. <laughs> Fair enough. I feel like I feel like Zia, if anything, would would just have like their pants back on. Like they're they're still being like kind of um, uh, kind of sassy a little bit, like in a little bit in the buff. New boot um, goofing, yeah. Yeah, new boot goofing. Um, they would dance with Isandro. Yeah, you and Isandro. Uh huh. Yep. We dance with Isandro, um, 
but also very curious to know where it is that Wit might have got off to, or if like um, they're around. Wit is drinking and kind of nodding along to everything. He's not like he hasn't left. Uh, he he doesn't seem to be like sneering or anything. Um, but you can see after a bit of time, he starts to play some music uh, from a liar that he has on his person. Um, he just begins to play uh, a pretty, <laughs> it's pretty like a raucous, so it kind of kicks the energy up a bit. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's a punk at heart. So like, it's very like high tempo, very quick, very like jaunty tune. But all mm -hmm. of you are just sort of like he hearing that and that kind of like changes the flow of the party a bit. I think that uh, when one tune ends, uh, Zeal will like clap and uh, like it, like start to clap and just like maybe see if like others like join in on that and then oh, like, yeah. approach him. Bravo! Ishwar lap it like yeah, folks absolutely applaud. Um, yeah, you approach. You're keeping the energy going. You're all a bunch of squares, so I had to make sure that it was lively. Are you having fun now, too? Nope. He keeps strumming. <laughs> He's being a fucking brat. <laughs> Absolutely not. Wouldn't be caught see? dead having fun like in a party like this. Of course not. You're mm. just drinking coffee, playing music. Yep. <laughs> not drinking coffee, but... Uh, he is drinking... drinking. Yeah, yeah. He's drinking coffee now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And drinking and drinking your drink, playing music, of course not. No fun to be had. Well, I wouldn't want to stop the music. I was going to ask you for a dance, but He kinda he doesn't agree to a dance, but he does get up and starts like dancing around the group as he plays. <laughs> Very good. All right. Echinacea, while they're waiting for a tattoo with Thanderil, will just be grabbing people to dance as they go. And I think um, when they get to both Kaylin and Lazuli, they will say, We all can fly. We can. We all can fly. Wanna, wanna dance up there? Oh. I wanna give you your, hmm? I wanna give you your outfit first, if you don't mind. Dress me. <laughs> Do it. Dress me. Phoenix. <gasps> well, I thought that would be fitting if you were to fly. You're brilliant. And then, oh, and then, Kaylin, you, Aurora Borealis. Mm. I haven't seen much of space, but up here in the north, when you look to the sky, sometimes the most miraculous colors dance. And I wonder if that's where you go. She doesn't know about space, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to lead it, she doesn't know about space. But she's like, Celestial Galaxy stuff, Aurora Borealis, it's... This is what I know. <laughs> so. Kaylin puts on the outfit, and it's very akin to the slutty Link outfit he wore at the gala. <laughs> except it is just an adornment of, oh, like... Yeah greens blues purples like stars across his body there are some exposed pieces where it's almost like this mesh material and you can see bits of his chest his stomach his arms like he's a bit this is the most like slutty kaylin has looked up to this point he loves slutty kaylin <laughs> our okay. husband okay, <laughs> our husband. okay. Um. <laughs> um i think echinacea a little out of character, um, just looking at Kaylin's fit, follows suit. Yeah! And they look down, they go, let's go. They have like this plume coming off the top of their head and these, uh, their wings have turned uh, like fiery red uh, from that translucent white. And um, yeah, just sort of like, very much akin to like Zio's Omni fit. Like it's just sort of feathers in places that matter. <laughs> and that's about it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. You see Carolyn reciprocate the, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Wow. Let's go. We should dance. 
<laughs> uh, you see as Kaelin uh, activates his Steps of the Night ability as a Twilight Cleric and begins to, very akin to, uh, to Echinacea at one point, create these Steps of Starlight where all of you begin to walk up. And um, it's it's so Cinderella coded, but it's just dipping from star to star. Echinacea mimicking that first flight you had with Lucian, moving from star to star. But this is a full scale dance and it's very swing oriented i think the energy here is picking up a bit and it's kaylin sort of like pushing you into large lifts and like bringing you down but holding you securely and just allowing you to to revel in flight yes the frame will open when he will like swing them around and then little pinpricks of starlight will allow like their feet to trip the light fantastic literally and then they'll close the frame and come close and dip one another and this sort of just uh tilt a whirl like perpetual yeah. momentum um and uh can zeo activate their uh, uh boots of flying and then grab lazuli and yeah and the <laughs> yeah and just sweep in right beside <laughs> Yeah, the, the, yeah, Zio and Lazuli join. Um, Kaelin sort of takes you, Echinacea, begins to like build on that that spin and just completely spins them around and around and around until he performs like a very deep dip. The tip of their toe is up on a star as he just leans down and kisses them deeply. They kiss him back, and I think their wings flutter them upwards a bit higher for a moment. Yeah. Just the pair of them. Fucking perfect. Cute. Yeah, all of you guys dancing amidst the starlight. Um, I love that so much. Um, okay. Uh, Kay what's Whistle's costume? Oh, yeah, oh. what's Whistle's costume? Whistle's costume is a silver bat. A silver, a silver bat? bat. <laughs> oh. It was this close to giving actually. Actually, it's a gold bet too. I, the, the bit that was my first <laughs> bit is having them wear the exact same costume. Incredible. I'm down with it. Because it's also I... inspired by the Gildan Fire as well. Yeah, true. So, like, gold wing type vibe. So it's like it's their bond over, you know, freaking, yeah. Gold bet. I think <laughs> Lazuli like, hands like, whistle like... the costume. He goes in, puts it on, comes outside. He hadn't seen Lucian at all. <laughs> 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 One of us has to change. Yeah, pizza <laughs> Lucian. Get your own style, yeah. man. Lazuli gave me this. Lazuli! Yeah. I put I it on first. I should little red horns on. Yeah. I put right. it on first. What the fuck is this? Lazuli can't hear me. right now. We're dancing. Oh. And just like drives her away, just like flies her away. You, you, you change. <laughs> I've got a better idea. What? Do you want to dance? I see its little smile. <laughs> I actually did just earlier uh, unattuned from my animated shield to my wings of flying. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> Lucian can fly, right? Lucian can fly. He summons two bat wings from his back, and absolutely, yeah. All right. Uh, you see, as Thanduril's like, this is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> you see, as two large silver wings sprout from uh, his shoulder blades, and two smaller <laughs> silver ones sprout from the small of his back as he flies upward and uh, looks mm -hmm. at Kaylin and just, may I cut in? Kaylin, you two have like reached that natural crescendo of your dance, and Kaylin's like, "Of course." Uh, he kind of goes to like awkward dad dancing by himself for a bit. <laughs> Echinacea will like rondele him into a three-person tango with Lucian and Whistle. Okay, yeah, he goes. Yeah. Wah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Kaylin with two golden bats. Yeah, Kaylin's <laughs> like, "Have you seen that get that meme from The Simpsons where it's um?" <laughs> It's the neighbor with the two strippers. That's Kalen right now with two golden bats. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> 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 so um, but yeah, yeah Kalen, Whistle, and Lucian, you guys are all kind of doing this very high speed tango. Echinacea, Thanderl just sort of wraps uh, his wings, like pulls you in with them uh, as the two of you get. Oh! <laughs> As the two of you get flush and he just says, 
It is good to see you having such a good time. Thank you for the gift you've given everyone. You still need yours. I do. But this dance will settle. This will do for now. And by that I mean I'm two. having the time of my life. <laughs> I'm so glad. I think they pull him into um, <laughs> this very like Argentine tango, um, mm. constantly closed frame. Um, and it's like with Argentine, there is no set step. It's entirely about reading the other person. Yeah. And I think they just read each other through space. And this newer version of, Ec of Echinacea starts to reintegrate the memories of the old. And the world around them shifts from the air to their home in Illin Bell to old ruins where they had danced to fields to just every location where they've danced before that they can remember. There are so many locations, right? Like you discover that like there is a there is a shot of you two in a vacation home on the Scorched Isle dancing above the water. Um, there is a location uh, in Bessonmont in a wine bar uh, where the two of you are just sort of like enjoying the very dark and smoky area. Um, there is a, a, a flash of even on uh, even amidst the Lorethian nights, a dance was always spared between the two of you. Um, there was always enough time for a dance to end the night. Um, and you're finding yourself having integrated these moments falling into a routine that makes you feel so fucking whole. And they end in a dip. And I think their wings just wrap around him in return. And they feel whole, like yeah. you said. There was a, a, a kiss shared there as Thanderil just revels in the closeness. It's clear that, that both of you have yearned for this, whether you knew it or not. There was something missing, and tonight it's been found. Tonight it's been reveled in. And here in the sky, <clears throat> they give Thanderil an advance, and they tell him the story of rescuing Shar and being rekindled with their love in the catacombs of Saivaholm. A tear sheds as all of you dance in the sky. And uh, after a bit, I imagine you you all retreat. Echinacea receives their tattoo. The party continues. And we will pick up with the party next time on Known Realms to Lesh. Guys. Guys. What the fuck? All right. Thank you guys for hanging out and for being here. Uh, before we end tonight's chapter, let's go ahead and outro our players, starting with David. Yo, guys, my name's David. Uh, I've been playing Whistle, the Hobgoblin Fighter, tonight. Uh, both he, him pronouns. You can catch me here as Whistle or maybe other things. Um, and you can definitely catch me over at Stealthy Elf Productions as the game master of a couple of Pathfinder second edition campaigns. And, oh, I also play a, an electric cowboy named Jin in a uh, new uh, game designed by our very own Lycus Stratus over at Sell the Elf. That's me. Amazing. Thank you, David. Angie. I am Angie. They, them pronouns. I have been playing Zio Marino. He, they pronouns. And uh, you can find me at Aegon Thetic uh, on all places on the internet. You can find me tomorrow, Monday, and for every Monday in April over on Just the Humans' channel as we play our Saga's One Piece game. Uh, tomorrow is Jess's birthday, so we are doing, kicking off uh, March of Dimes stream, charity stream week that Jess is planning with uh, their birthday game. Um, and then on Tuesday, you can uh, check me out over on Embers of Rage on Bad House RPG Twitch. Um, and we are uh, getting into some uh, spooky, scary stuff. 
because we're in deep shit over there. So come check us out. Come check out the deep duckus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Incredible. <sighs> I was born to be a clown. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, Lou. Good, I am. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello, I'm Lou. I play Lucille. No, that's just my... <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I actually mixed it up. Uh, I play Lazuli. Uh, you can find me at Lazuli underscore art on most social medias. We both use she, her pronouns, and yeah, I actually just saw it in chat. Can I show off what you drew? For Lazuli, Lazuli yeah. Your costume. <gasps> Cute. Uh, a, a little sneak peek of Lazuli at the party. Look at this shit. It's dragon, so dragon mommy with dragon baby. Dragon baby. I just want to squish my little that looks like Pepper. Dog. It's the way that they're both looking at each other. There are no thoughts behind that little red dragon's eyes. So uh, only love. <laughs> only love. Only love. Um, thank you, Lou. Oh, and the gear behind the ear. Incredible. Uh, last Hi. but certainly not least, Button. Hello, I'm Button. My pronouns are they, them, so are Echinacea's. I am Blue Blue Button on social media. You can find me playing Cress over on Stealthy Elf Productions in the Unearthed Inheritance campaign. It's a middle of post-apocalyptic game where we're trying real hard to keep people alive and we are not always doing great um you can also find me on dice cream sandwiches channel in the astral academy campaign where uh i accidentally attached a part of the god to myself oopsie oopsie doopsie yes. oopsie doopsie that's it amazing thank you so much Hi, everybody. My name is Alec. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me all places on the internet at Tales Archived. I've been your archivist for the evening. Um, uh, when I'm not here doing stuff and things, uh, you can find me over at Stealthy Elf Productions and Heroes of Asteria Unearthed Inheritance. Uh, one of the people it has not been going well for, your boy, me. Um, uh, Finn's great. I love Finn, and we love our friends over at Stealthy Elf Productions, so please uh, give them all the support. They're nearing 100 followers on Twitch, so let's uh, let's help get them there. Um, yeah, you can see us here next week uh, as we pick up for some more KRT, but look out on socials, because we might have some uh, very fun things coming down the pipe soon. With that, we will throw you guys into a raid. Uh, over to our friends at Total Party Kiss. They're playing their uh, Greek-inspired Tragedy of Theologian campaign. Um, great game. You need to watch it, hang out, and support. I demand it. Until then, we will see you in the next adventure. Bye, everybody! Bye-bye! Hold on tight! We're gonna raid! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I tried so hard I heard that, Alec. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs>